Yo, hello my beautiful, beautiful viewers, yeah? Hope you guys are well. Today I've got a video for you. It is a pod between me and my good friend Salty Mike. We go through some shenanigans. Me and him have got a good friendship. We've been friends for a long time. We hang out in Discord and stuff really often. So pretty close with Mike, dope dude. Uh, cool guy and uh, had a lot of fun on the pod yeah the first half we're kind of just shooting it on a bunch of different subjects and then the second half we deep dive and i mean deep probably deep than the deeper than any video i've seen uh you know when it comes to the actually actual playability of uh, the economy and some of the changes coming and the lack of economy so make sure you guys tune into the second half Give me a like and a subscribe if you can. Thumbs up, all that jazz. Comment. Let me know what you guys think of the video. It helps me with the algorithm. And uh, I appreciate you dudes, yeah? Let me know how you like it. I look forward to reading the comments. And I'll see you guys in there. Okay, we've officially started. All right. So, um, obviously, it'll just be you and me hanging out, yeah? I've got some fucking questions. It's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll just go wherever the wind takes us. I've got like maybe six questions here that'll just help with some structure of it. But um, dude, do you remember when we met? Go on. Do you like, cause I might have a very different memory to this Pro than you do. Probably you stream sniping me or something. <laughs> Yo, okay, cut that, cut that. Did I know we met the first time we met? Yeah. What was that? Did I? Do, Did do I you... know that we met the first time no, we met? No, I, I definitely, okay. no, I definitely didn't hit you anything like that. Um, okay. I know a couple of people who did, but no, I definitely yeah. didn't. No, it was, <laughs> you know what it would have been? Um, and I, I remember being so jaded on it. I was like, I hate this guy. It was when we did mm. our piracy tax. Do you remember that? Like way back in the day? I thought that was so stupid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yep. I was like, bro, as yeah. if like Mike should be praising this. Yeah. And, I, and like you and I, me got off to a bad footing on that front. Yeah. Like it, it, it was, it was a, it's a good thought, but the mm -hmm. game is so, it was, it is, it's like actually still crazy to do that almost. Yeah. Yeah. In a way. Right. Yeah. But yeah, well, I mean, no, I could see that. You, you and could probably, probably, you could probably, you could sort of get away with it now. Yeah, like, but back then with like the thirty k's, like, yeah, all that stuff, it was, it was absolutely useless. But was it, was it when they first put in like the Mo Trader and you were able to trade stuff? No, and you way guys before were like, then, right, here you we couldn't go. even, you couldn't even. Wait, how did you send money to people back in the day? Oh, yeah. that's right. You you had to do it through an escort beacon, remember? Oh yeah, you you had to like, offer an escort. escort beacon to somebody, and they yeah. just had to stay near you, and you would you would choose the amount of ticks per yeah. second or something. Yeah, it was so crazy. Oh my god, yeah. I was like, wait, how we, did that work? Yeah, escort beacons. Star that Citizen players making the gameplay that should have been in Star Citizen <laughs> for ten years for ten years. How, how did an escort beacon mission that worked? That was better than a trade window because there was no trade window yet. Holy moly, yep. dude! Yep, Yo. that was probably it back then. And I was just like, <sighs> oh, it's because the the I think the issue that I had with it was like you're just not gonna get buy in from these guys, dude. Like we... the you will occasionally, but yeah. most players and and like all the pirates dealt with it. The the backspacing, the blowing up your own ship. Oh. They just don't play along. Yep. Right. The game yep. has to force them to play along, and, and that's where all this bed like, logging stuff has come from, right? The reason we did it, though, wasn't, like, we weren't thinking of the traders. We were thinking of the trade orgs, you know? Like, that was, like, yeah. in our mind, it was about, like, our, really, like, creating good or bad relationships on purpose with orgs. Because here's the yeah. thing, like, and I'll, I'll give you a little bit of insight. Do you remember Revere? I have like so much yeah, respect for this guy. He's the Gallo guy. Yeah. yeah so still like, talk to him. He sends me little updates of his of his game oh, that he's making. Yeah, his little Star Every Citizen. While, he's yeah, the man. Yeah, 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 yeah he sends Star me Citizen. those too. Um, yeah, great guy actually. Really cool guy. But he, it's so funny because we were very much like watching them and how they operate when we were like making those documents in that Spectrum post. And for yep. people who don't know what we're talking about, back in the day, like. We were bored, we were heavily PU focused, and we decided to like introduce this Spectrum third, which was like 
a forced tax on anyone that was trading as an organization mostly and then we would also target individual traders that were really popular in the community and it was a tax and like basically it was you had to pay us a certain amount a month based off how much we estimate that you earn that month and then that if you did pay it that would buy you security from us you'd be able to hit us up if you ever wanted pvp to us to deal with pirates and stuff and i'll tell you what this is like pre-mongrel squad like this was way yeah. back in the day so like before the pirate orgs even existed but we were doing that and um and it was kind of like a win-win scenario for us because it's like we elected for them to not pay and then we'd be pvping against them and their security and if they did pay then they'd let us be aware of pvp if it ever happened so that's kind yeah, of like you ended up having like a great relationship with him and the Galag yeah. guys and they would tell you what the new trade runs were going to be yeah. and stuff like that right and so he, like it, it ended up working out really well and yeah uh, you know i was it made a network i don't like want to say i was dead wrong on that i still don't think the game was in a place where yeah it's supported it well enough yeah. i think you had some good buy-in from people who got it yeah but i think and most he... players in the community still don't get video games <laughs> you and know where so, he got it like he was the exception right like i'll tell yeah. you what like sergeant tickles he took it terribly <laughs> like he's like are we gonna get silo on this right and then oh for revere, real yeah. yeah and then revere instead was like oh man this is like great for us and like i remember like because he streamed this and we were obviously watching this like how's he gonna accept the tax or not like how's this gonna go because they were the biggest yeah. trade dog back in the in that time and um well, and the whole thing is is like the the guys who are interested in that kind of gameplay typically aren't going to be interested in pvp because in, yeah. in star citizen yeah, yeah you can do everything you can be whatever you want to be mm -hmm. but because their skills involved you kind of got to choose a a lane mm -hmm. and you gotta you kind of choose what you like and there's it's gonna be hard to run cargo a lot and to be good at pvp mm -hmm. right at least at that time because you didn't really have the galogs and all these websites to tell you where all the trade <clears throat> runs are yeah so the the idea there was like they're not gonna none of their guys that follow them are gonna be sweaty enough to protect them yeah so now we get to run cargo all we want and the mm -hmm. sweaty guys are just gonna keep an eye on us and yeah. it's like a, yeah it's exactly it's a win-win it's perfect and that's how they saw it too like and we were like so shocked because like yeah, the red mentality entire, dude because he went in like he uh, like i remember vividly like he fired up his stream he gets in a discord with all his 15 traders and they're like revere you see this we're gonna have to like high yeah. security like we're in trouble they're gonna come after us we're gonna have to like and then he's just like or, and, he, and he read it on the stream and he's just like guys this is great What's 10%? 10% is nothing. And we can sick these guys like dogs on any of our competition, you know? And then yep. that was just oh, yeah. like, because on top of that, one. yeah, he recognized that there's the, the supply and demand system in the game yeah. that if somebody else is trading somewhere else yeah, and you're hurt competing him. against them, yeah. it hurt them. Yeah. yeah. It was so smart. So like he, and, and like everyone in voice was just like, oh wait, like, and they're all like took a step back from it. They're like, oh man, he's right. Like if anything mm -hmm. we should, and they paid us like that. Like we, yep. we, uh, back in the day. Okay. Listen, we stream sniped them. Okay. It was like 2019, 2020. Okay. But we did it. And like, we met up and they, Even they gave us the money. Year, we it's... flew off. It was perfect. Like it was How, the best so, thing. It, I guarantee it's nowhere near the money that people are making today in today's game. Mm -hmm. But how much were they paying you? Oh, was, was it like we every were like month it or? was like a hundred and fifty k a month. I think was like the the deal we had. That's, and oh my god, it's like bro, nothing. Yeah, too. because th there was no money back then. You know, like yep. if you had a couple million UEC, you were loaded back then. Like yep. absolutely yep. loaded. Um, and a lot of that was because of money sinks because they had artificial money sinks and the artificial money sink was the 30k dude like the 30k yep. is what kept the economy in balance you know it's like because yeah, you would just lose it would just ever your buy-in yeah, like half the economy was just vanishing all the time on repeat so <laughs> um it actually worked like remember jump town man like early mm -hmm. jump town when you did those cargo runs and you'd be flying to levski and it's like you 30k like just as the as the ship just as it lands <laughs> and you're like or yeah. or like 10 feet oh. away from the terminal <laughs> and, then that and, was and how about the fact that like 
when you're when you 30 k'd if you upgraded the components on your ship they were gone <laughs> oh. if you if you blew up yeah. your ship they were gone like there yeah. were so many it was so much more punishing then yep. in a bad way because because the way yep. you got punished was not your fault yeah uh most of the time but yeah it yeah it's i'm I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I, I, I missed miss that, that though. Oh I my that. god! Yeah. And th dude, this is what worries me so much about Star Citizen, and it worries me the most about the community is that the game is getting so cushiony, you know, like and like the the item recovery <sighs> I, thing they've brought in. Like, I've got great concerns about that. The a good example was like the ship components yeah like you remember back yeah. in the day if you had omni skies on your ship it was juiced yeah but if you yeah. died you lost the omni skies you know like yep. that was and the 30k part aspect of that was ridiculous it was like yeah. it, it would just vanish and that was that would suck but the fact that you needed to have those guns and you did so much better because of that was so <laughs> nice now a wipe just happened. Salty Mike goes straight to Hurston. He buys four attrition threes. That's it. He's done for the next nine months. You know, like yep. that was barely a repair cost. Yeah. You know, like it was start in Orison, buy all of your quantum drives and, and shields. Yep. And then go get your guns and you're done. It's, it's it. Yeah. Nothing, isn't it? It's and back simple. in the day and back in the day, like and mind you it was gimmicky and it was because it was wasn't f like working at the time but at yeah. least you had that you know like at least I mean, losing to be fair, felt like losing no no yeah and that yeah like i just i miss that aspect of it i miss like weapons meaning something because the problem is to say they introduce new guns and for the record we could talk about this thanks to the evo now the singe cannons and evo are ridiculous they're like the god tier yeah. guns so yeah we're all gonna go buy singes from wherever that is sold um hopefully it will be sold in game but like but go buy singes we're gonna strap them on our ship it'll cost maybe 30k <laughs> you're gonna have to buy the defender to get the singes <laughs> to buy Dude, that's probably how you're gonna them, have to do yeah, it exactly exactly but in a hypothetical here four singes from new babbage you know 5k 10k a pop whatever you're done you're done for the next yep. year on that ship. Like, yep. and I despise that. Like, cause, and thank God FPS went in a different direction. You lose the FPS armor and the weapons when you go out and die. But I do wish that that existed in um, the ship combat right now. I do wish that you lost the components and it went back. Like you could maybe like Tarkov where you could insure it before you go out. That's what, you know, but Tarkov's there's got to the be that pain. system for star citizen. Yeah. Yeah. Because you have a situation where you can claim the the ship, mm -hmm. and if by X amount of time nobody has, yes, I don't know, stripped, uh, it. stripped it, then yep. you get the stuff back. Yeah, right? like you dude. have these systems in the game that are even further along, lore wise, making sense wise, all this yep. stuff for those things. But you said you were concerned earlier. Do you think that they're they're not going in that direction. No, no. And I, I worry. I, I think uh, they are. I let think me they're just not you... ready to yet because they know the state of the current game is still not there yet. My I worry think that's what it that is it, that it will happen instead. Like where my exact worry is, is that they are going to do exactly what you mentioned, like an insurance thing and you get it back. But knowing them and like, maybe I'm wrong. I'm hoping I'm wrong, but the fact that someone salvaged it and stripped it will mean nothing to the insurance claim and it'll just get used as a duping mechanic. You know, like, I don't know if they, they would take that extra step to add that fact that it got stripped, it got, you know, duped parts and stuff like that. Like, and I don't know if they care about that level of detail, you know, to ensure integrity into the game economy because that's what we're talking about here right like the game economy yeah 100 percent. like that's my it's world. scary what they're doing with the fps stuff like it didn't come into 323 but it's something they wanted to do with the hangers where you get back oh, your yeah. subscriber gear like bro okay you paid for the stuff you should get it back i think we're mm -hmm. both going to be kind of in agreement with that yeah but the the idea of um the guns 
also being having been sold the players that are yeah. not purchasable on the shops and it's just like but that should know, be some weird stuff there that right like you you when you buy it off the store what do you mean you should be okay so like the item reload what, what is it called like the item recovery retrieval thing yeah the item yeah. recovery uh whatever the tool okay the yeah. item recovery i don't think tool. it has an official name yeah um that you know like i don't think that like you should be feeding you should have to feed a large amount of uec in that to get your stuff back it should be like buying yeah. it back but if we're talking like this it's a, the subscriber gun that never stops giving then it's so disappointing i actually mentioned exactly. this um i asked detox for his take in his twitch chat about this um but yeah like and he based as all hell was like i'm fine with that as long as the cooldown of which you get the gear back is significant and yeah the cost of getting that gear back is extreme because also significant yeah, yeah like it, 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 it and uh, dude my my you viewers go, you gotta me. want to take care yeah yeah there, there has you to gotta be gotta want to take care of your stuff yeah and people need to realize that getting stuff only feels good when you're also losing stuff you know when it's a balance between the two but if it's just like how like the most fun i've had in the last six months mike was getting the xeno threat gear from these missions i like i get like the cool looking arms from the npc the cool looking chest and then i get a the different style. head yeah. yeah and then i'm like okay my character's juiced i'm getting out of here like this is great like that for me is the most fun but if i'm getting that and i know that you were big on i think um elliot mentioning that it's a going to be a quest reward but i was just mm -hmm. like damn dude like why don't we go kill these npcs for this instead you know like why why should we just get this in our hangar as a reclaimable item back and forth you know like yeah and i just the, i think ahead. it's sort of okay i think uh, um burks made a really good point actually on twitter about this and it, i i knew i felt exactly the same way but he just put it in perfect words so i'm going to give him uh the credit on this one in in like wow you kill a boss and you get a trophy yeah. for killing that boss and you have that thing to show it off so sure. like i'm okay with that it, mm -hmm. it's yeah, it's an armor. It's a medium armor. So I think a lot of people either typically choose light or heavy. So it's like mm -hmm. the least important one. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people wanted that special helmet, the cool looking helmet as the mm -hmm. trophy because a head is a better trophy than a full suit of armor, like, I guess. I don't know. There was there could have been better choices. Yeah. But I am I am largely in agreement with, yeah, you want people to play the game to get the things. Yeah. It's but what I'm totally cool with is that they decided to make a, uh, a, a suitable trophy. I don't think the juice is worth the squeeze. You're mm -hmm. doing like six weeks of missions for a medium yeah. armor. Yeah. I think that's insane, but I'm glad that they hurt out the community because I don't think anybody was happy with the... If it's like a skin, the like base say, reward. You, say you buy a medium armor set and you can choose for it to have that Xeno skin, sure, you know, like, but yeah. as long as it's not just, you know, you get that armor set like snap your fingers every time like that's what worries I, me man like i, I want think this... we have to assume that they're going to completely change the system because the yeah. system is so broken and makes no sense yeah. but when will that happen is that is that on the list of things that are going to be in 1.0 yeah you know like maybe but that is probably kind of low on the list yeah you would assume given all the things that do need to happen I mean, so, they're talking about wear and tear, right? So, like, armor is going to have decaying conditions soon, isn't it? Which is very yeah, but much. If we're talking like the skin, like using any medium armor and then transmogging it into a, a Xeno skin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, where does wear and tear fall fall into that for you, right? Because, like, I love the idea of a transmog. I know it's not very yeah, no, I'm realistic. For it. Yeah. But, I'm for it. And, and like, people will freak out probably, but I think it's probably the best choice. Yeah, if you're talking like honest. heavy armor, transmog on heavy armor, that's fine. If you're talking yes. about like yes. light transmog on heavy armor, it's, then it gets dorky, right? Um, Agreed, but, 100%. But yeah, like I like the idea of like, okay, like now that you did that quest chain, you know, and the idea of it being a significant quest chain, now you have the ability to convert medium armor that you would purchase off a store in game guys not the website store in game 
then uh yeah you could transmog it so you know i'd be okay with that yeah like that would yeah. that'd be a good middle point for sure because you gotta keep in mind too like tarkov kind of does that too now they're selling clothes you know and stuff like that but and i get so much shit like i'll just finish what i was saying earlier like my viewers hate me for how much i love tarkov like but like <laughs> they've, they've answered all the questions you know like you buy a you buy armor if you get away with it you need to repair it it's starting to lose value it's starting like you, you shave off 10 percent off the top with the repairs every yep. time so you can only yep. take it a set of armor so far and that keeps the um, uh the wheels of the economy turning right because you don't have unlimited use out of a gun you don't have unlimited use out of an armor set um and yep. then that creates a necessity to loot and buy armor sets which creates a necessity for rubles uec you know that kind of stuff so it brings a smile to my face i don't think tarkov has all the answers for a game like star citizen and their community and and who their player mm -hmm. base is but mm -hmm. i think they've got a lot of the answers right of risk and reward yeah and it's a careful balance like it's a balance that torments my soul every day right like with the cheating and stuff like that like yeah. the people hiding in bushes but like the point is <laughs> they've got the perfect balance of what Rats. is a difficult experience uh, oh god we'll have to talk off stream about some of this stuff they announced but um <laughs> they have um like the perfect balance of it's difficult to a point it's um, they've got a, you know, like a buy back into the economy with the scav thing. And you'd never want anything like that with star citizen, but I just like the, the percentages of success and like how, even if you're the best player, you're only going to push that bar, maybe another 10 or 20%, but you are going to yeah. lose just as much as the other guys, right? You're just a little bit more ahead than them. Like, I love that aspect of it, that real careful balance. Um, and then like, you know, the, the, get the gun systems, like, the the depth and complexity to just building a gun you know because right now it looks yeah. like in the fps experience it's very battlefield-esque it's like okay muzzle can you can change the muzzle you can change the scope you can change the handle grip maybe and then that's it you know so i i know they want to take it further. further i don't think it'll ever go to tarkov mm -hmm. but i like you know Z zach the guy the glint guy will be in twitch chat and i and we've definitely shared that I, he wants to to do more with components it's just a matter of they're making so many changes now yeah they can't do them all at once or whatever yep. and i think he definitely wants to and they are starting to make some like uh some little things with uh suppressor reduces damage the having a any sort of scope reduces your ads speed yep. and other yeah which things is good in, increase yeah like yeah. they're starting to add those little um characteristics to everything and it mm -hmm. makes finding those items meaningful or eventually maybe crafting items meaningful right and then oh, because yep. w because they have like a base right that they're gonna like then mm -hmm. you can start taking it to where a higher end one is better right and then yep. all of a sudden these things like doing more challenging missions for the pve players gives progression for them as well right because mm -hmm. then you have better components on your guns or your ships or whatever right and it's like mm -hmm. you can kind of see them making the game for the first time and i know the, the zach guy's gotten a lot of crap for the battlefield glint stuff but i Ugh. think there's a lot of other good things that are happening i yeah. wanted to touch on one thing about tarkov real quick though sure is that there's a lot of really good stuff but i think that you know things that you talked about really that resonated with a lot of people in the community about master modes is that like easy to easy to, to join in and difficult to master i don't mm -hmm. think tarkov is an easier easy barrier oh, to entry at all gosh, i don't play it because of that right because yeah. it's like i don't have enough time to dedicate to get good enough to it yep and i think that's how a lot of people have felt with like certain things in star citizen up to this yep. point and we think that the changes that are making are going to be better for that right mm -hmm. so it's like i can see why your community hates tarkov because they probably <laughs> don't feel like they can no, the barrier exactly entry it. is just too much they work you know? like, you know, 12 hour days and then they want to come yeah. home and relax for it too, you know, and not stress yeah. out on, you know, like all the the nitpicky stuff that Tarkov is. Absolutely. Yeah. And then the problem is great, too. Great game. Yeah. It's got so much, it's got so much depth to it that you're just like forever, you know, hands in the box, discovering things all the time with it. Like it's yep. every day is this learning experience that never ceases. Like it's, yeah. it's mind blowing.
like it's the deepest game i've ever played by miles like and mm. i'm still like barely under the surface of it so i love that uh, every item you open in a loot box has the potential for you to pick it up and take yeah it has a purpose yeah everything, everything has a every single item in that game now does something like there's i open a loot box in star citizen it's like do i want to drink the purple drink today yeah. or the greenish yellow one yeah yeah one thing Should i, I was take really... my 300th tractor beam attachment one thing i was you know, really like, a fan of was the, um when they announced like the stims the medical stims like how um you know one of them helps you with blackouts in space i was yeah. like oh man that's talk of beautiful change like one i, I don't know the stims and all their uses because i my understanding is some of them are really pointless but like i love the idea of that like one can help you carry more gear for example or more weight on your character one helps you with blackouts in space you know one helps you sprinting with you know light armor and stuff like that and or, or like increases yeah. movement speed just things like that like that is just layers and layers of depth and complexity is fun because it's also discovery isn't it it's like new limits to push it gives you yeah. things to do and yeah and star citizen also, is doing that to, well to be fair changes to the to the fps side of things like you're getting injuries more now too so like yep. each one of these medicines seem to matter a little bit more i think that system yep. needs so much more still but um it's like one of the systems that it's least like peeking its head out and like trying to be a game mm -hmm. which is is cool i i don't think it's like succeeding super well at it yet but what we're what we're on could. the talk of fps experience then and uh, I, your, your viewers are gonna hate you yeah it's funny though but like how how do you feel about the fps experience in star citizen like i'll tell you what if there's anything i have next to no faith in it's that they're ever going to get fps to click like that is my biggest worry funny. performance wise and i just and, I, and i'm not like i think zach what do you mean been, performance wise okay a good example be the same video i all i you know what's funny whenever i talk to anyone about like why don't we take fps seriously I link this VOD of you playing Star Marine and like, <laughs> dude, and you know what it's like. It's people, you people falling all trying over the to place inject or... your arm with a C-54 gun and shooting into your limbs. It's you running sideways instead of, you know, like horizontal instead of vertical. You try to mm. swap the gun. It's swapping to a med pen and trying to shoot it at people. Like it's yeah. so, and then, and then what's worse is like, I hop in the other day I'm shooting and people are coming back to life as I'm killing them. And they, then they kill me. Like, I, it's it's so... Or like the... If I shoot anyone with a powerful gun, they start teleporting because of force reactions. Like, it is... There's no doubt in my mind. And to be fair, like, I want to give... Are you playing Zach, Evo? No. No, I, have, I haven't played this new Evo. I haven't at the time. Is it, like, I've been playing a lot of them, but not... Is it better? I don't think it's fair for you to say, I don't have faith and haven't mm -hmm. tried the changes yet and no but I'm it's not... hard it's hard now because yeah. evo is has been kind of stagnant so you can't jump into gun rush right now and easily find a game yep but i think you and your guys should go in and play one night it's it's a is it 10 that minute different? commitment like i thought yes and, and this is this is me being naive right like i thought yes that... and no yes yeah. and no I thought that the changes were how the weapon feels, and I did hear that they dialed back some force reactions. But I think, like my complaint, that they removed isn't... them. Yeah, my... like oh. a lot of a lot of them. Oh, I thought they would them. just dialed it back a bit. Okay, because my assumption for the FPS changes I, were. That... I don't want to speak out of turn though. They didn't remove sure. force reactions, but they removed a lot of the, um, the jank. Yeah, and that's but that's the. And that's that's my complaint. It, my complaint isn't how the gun feels. Like everything in Zach's scope, I'm super happy with. To be honest, even the glint, suck it, losers. But like, I'm <laughs> totally fine with all of. Like, I think the way he's made those guns handle and stuff is really great. Zach's a godsend to that company for sure. He's very based when it comes to FPS stuff. I think for sure. But in the way he talks to the community it's, which I, it's the I game enjoy. performance it's the it's the networking it's it's force reactions as a whole you know like it's the it's the mechanic it's the item switching you know like it's 
it's the systems and the like networking that I'm so disappointed in. Like it's well, the networking like, I can understand, yeah. but the, the gun switching and a lot of the jank, like those are things that they, they have mentioned that, mm -hmm. you know, certain new systems have fixed this and that. Oh, and the really? Other thing. Okay. And yeah, so it's not, I, I would argue it's not as bad. I think the biggest difficulty for most people in 323 is going to yep. be, there's just so many key binding changes. Yeah. So, Which for you can example, just change like, back, right? Like, it's not. You could change back, yeah. but yeah, like yeah. the first time you go in and you go it's to heal yourself, bougie. and you prone, you're gonna be like, "What? <laughs> oh, this really? happened." <laughs> yeah. Which is so. good, good timing, and props to Zach for getting it in with the UGFs, because I'm on like I am smoking some copium, brother, when it comes to UGFs, like. I'm in my mind like, are. space Tarkov's finally here. <laughs> you know, and I know you always give me Why? shit for having too much hope. I don't know, dude. Like, because the because it looks like a Tarkov map, it has to be a Tarkov map. Yeah, it does. Like, it exactly. can't just look like one. No, right? exactly. Siege of Orson looks like a Tarkov map, brother. Yep. But I don't see you running over there <laughs> playing Tarkov <laughs> at it. Yo, yo, yo! I've never done Siege. <laughs> Not one time. Not one time. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, nah. For me, it's. For me, it's, I definitely want the FPS experience to get better. Like a lot of my passion yeah. exists in that, but because I'm a realist, I guess it's like, and this is probably to credit you, you know, like you, a lot of the time you didn't want to get into PVP in a spaceship because you're like, this is getting replaced or it's so broken and gimmicky. I kind of feel the same way you did about that with FPS. It's like, mm. I don't want to get into FPS or take it seriously at all when I'm seeing people come back to life and kill me or, you know, people it's still there, by the way. Around. Yeah. Like but coming back to life is still there. And that's, and that's, this is what worries me, right? Like is what, mm. what, what's the answer to that? Do they have an answer? You know, like they know what the is... issue is. Go ahead. They know why it happens. It's yeah. like on their screen, they healed, but on your screen, you can't see it. It's a desync thing, but it's like, if they're not, like you said, I don't have confidence in the netcode. Well, they've not given us any reason to have confidence in the netcode. Yeah. And the only answer we have is we're focusing on server meshing first and then we'll deal with the netcode. And it's like, all right, well, four years later, we're still like, even though we've had some really positive tests, yeah. four years later, we're still waiting for server meshing, right? So it's like, yeah. when are we going to address the issues around the netcode and stuff like that? And because those are, are important too. And yeah. I think anybody who's in a PVP focused uh, community mm -hmm. would would probably argue that the netcode is as important, if not more important, than server meshing and getting more players in a server. Right? Yeah. Uh, I, I assume that they would think think th something like that, but in reality, that's what they're doing, and here we are. So yeah. I don't know. I don't. I don't have an answer for you when it comes to I just wonder, the like, netcode. But I just wonder if like the fact that we're all flying vehicles and like the the insane amount of synchronization that would have to happen between everything can they dial fps up to the speed it needs to perform at for it to work you know it's like because when you're talking like fighters flying around at a thousand meters a second that is like a massive feat right like and for them to mm. be in synchronization and that's like you know you've dialed that in for those speeds these vehicles these ships all, all the weapons all that jazz then you've got to do it on a micro level with ants, you know, like at high speeds as well. I just wonder, like, can both of these be achieved at the same time and work together, you know, rather than can I'm you get a huff. good FPS game and yes. a good giant spaceship vehicle game at the same time in the same place? I'm going to yeah. huff some copium. Ooh, I'm going to huff some copium. Yeah. So we had the server meshing test, right? Mm-hmm. And there were servers for one location and there were servers for another. And in particular, there were servers for planets mm -hmm. and there were servers for space, you know, at, at one point. Yep. What if oh. they chose the option to have higher tick servers be FPS situations yeah. and lower tick servers be the space ones? Like, sir, right? so because they can separate those yeah. areas and they made it seem like they could, why can't yeah. they, they make the decision to prioritize certain Higher things like how about when the ground is involved yeah like per, that's what you're talking well, about right i yes but maybe make it more we'll granular like it. we yep. we know siege of orison is going on so we put we make siege a 
high tick rate server or whatever yeah. like that location yeah, yeah. So i don't know if or if there are this many people on the ground yep you know when it gets dynamic could they do something like that so i am huffing and i don't know how possible that is but yep. we saw them split ground and you can look space. at the splits too right like you can look at how a server's performing without being inside it that's what trips me out yep. the most right is like you're watching people cross over and look at each other from different servers i'm like how the hell is that possible like you yeah. thought it would be like different realities between the two but yeah you could be right you could absolutely be right that that might be the key to it but that's always yeah. been my worry with the game right is this yeah me like too. getting both of those aspects which are just two polar opposite games and this has never been done before right like you look at starfield any elite dangerous or whatever it's a loading screen in between it's an instance in between getting all of this in the same battlefield like theaters of war <laughs> i guess like that's a whole nother feat to accomplish so the thing is is like we got arena commander and it's still a mess you know yep. so it's like the the whole server meshing thing is doesn't mean yep. anything if yep. if we still have arena commander and they're still insane desync and all sorts of issues i did so. i actually did do the server meshing test um mainly because i was worried about like cross-region pings and stuff so i was like oh we need to check what this is like and it, it yeah. performed pretty fine like it was very reminiscent okay. of live um when we were fighting like you know it wasn't better but it wasn't worse and that was like yeah. you know six seven hundred people in the system um, don't know how many were on the server we were on, but you know, like, cause it would have been split Lawville or sorry, Hurston, but yeah, like it, it, it played pretty well. I thought, to be honest, like what were your takeaways from the, the meshing test? We still got a ways to go. Yep. I think, but I'm also a little worried, not worried. Um, but I think we all went to, to the edges as much as yep. possible. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, because that was the cool and interesting thing to do. But my hope is that they do a good job of masking those edges, edges where we're not yeah. fighting at the ed on on them and yeah. throwing things across and making them disappear and all sorts yep. of weird stuff. Um, and obviously, like stability wasn't very good and and all sorts of things like that. So it's hard to say right now. But mm -hmm. I guess for me is I'm way more interested in the next tests as like all right you got your data and now they've been like laser focused on 323 mm -hmm. 323 goes out the door then i guess we have to deal with 323.1 and the ship sales and then they can focus on a test preview channel for that stuff yep. again but and then that'll be yeah, like what does all that four, stuff look like right 4.0 or whatever right yeah i mean like yeah. we obviously had a i think that test was under nda was the one where we jumped to pyro i don't think anybody did that publicly right i can't even remember now um but, but we're allowed to talk were, about that right we're still allowed to talk we about could that. talk about it yeah, but yeah, yeah. but the, the larger part of the community didn't get to experience it the oh, way yeah. everybody basically could have experienced server meshing in stanton mm -hmm. um because the the jump point masked so many of those issues oh, and it yeah, was okay. like a way more positive test experience because it was like holy shit dude i was mm. in stanton and now i'm not Mm -hmm. And that's all that mattered, right? So in this case, I sh in Stanton, the idea would be like, I didn't notice it. Yep. And unfortunately, we noticed we noticed it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It was very easy to notice. Yep. So yeah, it'd be like how they made they it did jump down tests or whatever, noticeable. right? With it, didn't they? I think um, so. Yeah. Which is funny. I it's, can't remember. It's yeah. it's like so much has happened with 323. Like that, it's I have only so much brain all. capacity, and yeah, like the, the, the my experiences in in the last server meshing tests are gone now. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, quickly then we'll we'll move on to this. How's the three twenty three testing going? Now I've been this uh, I've done the server meshing tests a couple of times. I mm. regrettably haven't been able to do the three twenty three tests nearly as much as I like, just because I'm busy. But how are you going with that? I mean, it's going about as good as you might expect for like a huge patch uh not Gigantic. great like a lot of yeah a lot of instability the the fear is is like i don't think master modes is on a we're ready for feedback level yet mm -hmm. if you guys look at the patch notes like this is public for everybody that's got to be concerning 
because they're mm -hmm. also talking about wave one and you're not ready for feedback on a system that's how many years old like mm -hmm. like that they've been talking about it since when 2020 mm -hmm. right um so that's concerning uh and then also the lack of in my opinion the most important feature the persistent hangers cargo all that stuff mm -hmm. so not seeing oh, any yeah. of that as well as very few economy changes from what i can tell oh, uh, as well yeah. so there's a lot of the the key things that i think are super important that are missing other people i can see maybe aren't interested in cargo and don't find that stuff as important mm -hmm. like huge fps changes right like mm -hmm. basically sweeping uh your first visor special specialized helmet for combat right like that's mm -hmm. kind of a big deal and has potential huge potential for future things like mining and uh, and crafting and other things maybe salvage you know yeah. dedicated helmets for those and you can kind of feel that when you use the dedicated helmets for combat there's a lot of good there distribution centers they're huge they're crazy big oh uh, so um copium. super super explorable yeah but i'm so looking forward to them i'm such a nerd oh uh, and i know like but not ready for feedback you yeah. know like it's all these big things they're they're not it's been how many months since October? And it's a little bit like, so what have we been doing, guys? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Like, what have we been doing? Because you showed these things polished and we're not ready for feedback yet. It is a little bit like, it just, I'm not freaking out. I'm not raising the alarms, yep. but I'm doing one of these. Like, mm -hmm. what's going on? You know, yeah. what's going on here? Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. It, it's safe to say it's the biggest patch they've had. Right, like, and I've I yeah. came in at three point three, but this for me, this is like by at least a magnitude of four, the biggest. Like, I think the other 100%. biggest maybe was like especially the from quality of life or something, right? Like, quality of life standpoint, oh. it's it's probably the biggest for sure. Yeah, because in the reality, most of those cards are improvements to things that you already have, mm -hmm. but they're such big improvements that they feel like new features themselves, right? <laughs> And that's what they needed. They needed a lot of quality of life stuff. How do you feel about, okay, let's, let's go on to the, the big th feature of 323. How do you feel about master modes? I, I guess since I'm, cause it's a big now feature it's for settled. you, it's less yeah. big of a feature for me, right? Yep. Somebody who mines and runs cargo and stuff like that more than, but this than was PVPs. to be your entry. This was to be the time that Mike gets into combat, like on a serious note, right? Or, and ha and who would I get into combat with? You. Yeah. Have I gotten into combat yet? No. But I've, I'm assuming that's just because you don't see it as like the final picture yet, right? You're waiting for them to... No. Huh? It's, it's, just, it's unfortunately very similar to why you haven't played much yeah. Evo. It's just mm -hmm. I, haven't, I, have, I, have had, I have not had the time to dedicate to it. Oh, okay. Like, are, are, are you doing Avengers charity thing? It's funny. Are you going to play in it? No, if you can? I, I, I knew... Yeah, I knew it, I knew it was coming. Um, he did tell me about it early, um, and we were planning to do it, but I haven't heard anything since. You know, and I, I, I always assumed but it's gonna that happen was at because some point, I assume. he was jaded. I assumed because he was so jaded on Master Mates, maybe they've pulled the plug for now until it gets better or something. Oh I no, know. I don't. Th maybe, maybe, maybe not. But the like for me, I want to try to, <clears throat> I want to try to have that experience again that I had in that tournament. A that's couple why years I've been, ago or whatever, right? That's why I've been uh, doing my reacts is so I can qualify for that tournament. <laughs> it's all my, <laughs> my YouTube channel for the last four months is just to get me into that tournament. <laughs> no, it's um, but no, like I, I I was looking forward to it, and to be honest, it's such a good cause, man. Like props to him yeah. and those guys for doing that. Like that is that is absolutely the reason to do it, you know. And it's that yeah. that is so compelling to go to, and. Like, I remember the rules that they announced, I thought was like, oh, that's quirky and fun. You know, like, that's not, like, super sweaty. That's not, like, insane drama. You know, it ain't no. going to be, like... And, and the thing is, too, is, like, for the cause, which is to help the kids, for anyone listening, um, you know, is it, it's really unifying, you know? While we're shooting spaceships at each other, we're all very appreciative of doing it. So it's just, like, just such a good idea, top to bottom, I thought, to be honest. Like, Genuinely. yeah but like i wanted to start practicing for that so like yeah. i have reasons and and in the end it's coming in but what mm -hmm. I, what i'll say is is that i noticed that i didn't notice it 
as much as I thought I would. I think people like it's a huge shift, but in your daily, like moving around the verse kind of thing, mm-hmm. it's not as, um, Oh, I guess like got a million questions about this, like Keep going. detrimental then it's not like, it doesn't feel as detrimental for the average <sighs> player that mm-hmm. isn't engaging in combat. Mm-hmm. It is a, gift when it comes to combat i think like the moment you're inv- involved in a fight and like you're waiting for your drive to spool up to be able to run away mm-hmm. like that is a a totally different experience but when you're just traveling like spooling your quantum drive up to drive to go a little faster is not this like huge hurdle that you have to climb over this you... huge barrier that you feel like you're blowing through so with your logistics background for anyone who doesn't realize mike heads a logistics or loves to do mining all the logistic aspects of the game um probably mm-hmm. the best that i would argue but when it comes to that are you just in nav mode the entire time no the no. opposite because uh i'm mostly in scm because oh. you can boost up to 500 meters per second so if you're just mm-hmm. quantum traveling around so like how what's the experience when you're going to locations right you quantum to them you're within 20 kilometers of them mm-hmm. you boost a few, like you boost you let go you boost you let, and you're and more in control of your ship doing? like i don't yeah. find myself yeah i don't find myself going to nav i don't find myself feeling like i need to go to nav mode okay here's a good question when you when you come out of a quantum jump to, i should know this i really should um i kind of just been waiting for it to go to ptu but like when you come out of quantum and arrive at a station, are you back at, does it bring you out at SCM or do you, are you still in nav when you land? Oh shit. You know? I, I think you're still in nav. I can. And that, see this, this, this. Let me just like bring up a video of me playing, um, <laughs> not on screen obviously, but yeah. I can, I can look and, and see for sure. And just, I'm check. curious because like that, that fucking changes everything, man. Like that is the big one, because a lot of I'm people. I'm ninety nine percent sure you're not in in Nav, which would be a good in thing Nav. in my in my opinion. That would be oh, no, a you're good not balance. in SCM. I should say you are in Nav. Would be my guess, See, and that would like I, that would worry me. It doesn't it doesn't work much differently than today's game. But don't you think that that's like okay? Put yourself in Agent Letty's shoes, wanting to do piracy. Mm-hmm. How stuffed is he now? You know, like people arrive at these stations, they're going at 1200. He's got to catch him and his combat limitations are 40% of the speed of someone at nav. Like people can, and, and people act very doomsday about the fact that they don't have shields in nav. But I tell you what, like it's the fact you're going at 1200 speed or whatever is the defense you need. But then again, I think some of the ships that are in nav have way lower speed ceilings, don't they? Is that true? Like, no, I haven't looked. Maybe. At, are they all? Are they all around twelve hundred still? Do you know? So you're asking the wrong guy who's not yeah. focusing on like mm-hmm. all the ship stuff as much. Yeah, fair um, enough. The, I'm I I think I'm about to quantum travel in the video that I'm looking for, so I'll let okay. you know. Um, but this is this is also an older build. But anyway, the, the I mean, there's a lot of questions around the mantis and stuff like that as well right and i think some people have some answers and they're keeping them close to their chest and i'm not going to spoil it Mm -hmm. for people but i don't think piracy is dead do you Uh, think it so whether you're in nav or not i don't think from what i heard Mm -hmm. no okay but i think everybody is playing coy because they want to make sure it doesn't die because we all know cig can't keep a handle on everything that's going on in their game especially around the ships Mm -hmm. so the idea of um letting them know that something might work that they don't want to work is Mm -hmm. what people are keeping oh okay keeping quiet yeah so i think the mantis is going to be okay essentially yeah because that's that's my worry right that's my big concern is the whole like food chain because like if logistics players are roaming around for free because they don't ever like who in the logistics ship is going to start shooting their turret you know some guy got caught but you're never going to get caught 
if you're just flying around nav like if you quantum jump and you come out of quantum jump mm. you're in nav that's it you've gotten away like if someone it just depends on what the mantis does exactly like the one thing i don't know the answer to is does the mantis take you out of like take other yeah, players out of nav right or out? whatever yeah. Yeah. yeah i don't i actually don't know the answer to that yeah and that's um, that's gonna be the big deciding factor because yeah i definitely worry you, okay. specifically for those guys i have your answer sorry sure. to interrupt when you leave when you jump yep just like the current experience you're still spooling like you know how it automatically spools for your next jump yep it stays the same think think about it couldn't change because think about a situation where okay i'm jumping from orison to an om to another location on a to a moon to a location on that moon hmm. do you really want to have to go in and out, press in b and out. over and over and over again so i yeah. think just from like a gameplay standpoint they keep you that's, in nav mode for that and that's fine right like and it's it's all yeah. going to come down to the mantis isn't it like the the interdiction yeah. mechanic what it can do because yep. if the interdiction mechanic doesn't stand a chance of catching these guys then we're in huge trouble in my eyes like because exactly then piracy is an issue then security is an issue then nav is just going to get abused even in combat people will abuse it you know like that's <clears throat> a big concern of mine too is like if two orgs go head to head who comes out of nav first you know like who decides that they're going to plant the flag and then does the other group just count their numbers and go all right hold on guys they've got 20 we've got 10 not let's not bother and then they just fly off they never come out they never decide to go to scm they're gone well you know well yeah i mean and what's the biggest concern in live is fights never end yep and if, if there's a mechanic where a, a ship can fly very fast mm -hmm. while others in <clears throat> combat cannot mm -hmm. then there has to be a uh equalizer and yes. the equalizer has to be a tackle mechanic a mechanic yep. that prevents you from running for x yep. amount of time or something like that it, something to that effect i'm not going to make any claims or say any numbers of exactly how it should work i'm Absolutely. certainly not the person that has that expertise and should understand it but i've played mmos and i was always that toxic guy who knocked players off their horses so the good pvpers <laughs> can kill right yeah. like i was the annoying guy Mm -hmm. And um, and people like to play that role as well. The Mantis is a is a is a very special ship from that standpoint. Is yep. it, it's it's something that people take pride in being good at, mm -hmm. and they have an oppor a unique opportunity here to make that a more skillful mechanic as well. Yeah, right. It, but it like, has to not have just such make good sure it works. Balancing too, it needs to work yeah. perfectly. And I'm not saying like just be overpowered. I'm saying like the guy needs to be able to have a good chance of getting away with skill and a good chance of not getting away if he messes it up like that it should be yeah. a, a balance and vice versa but, yeah and it and it can't be one way or another but that yeah. the the importance of that mechanic that bridges scm combat players with nav targets is like a big deal you get that wrong how disappointed were you with when what? they said when they, announced they, it? They, they didn't know um it was like, bro, how do you not yeah. know? Was the yeah. because I feel the same way with you. Is yeah, how important that thing is. Is how why are we did testing you not know? this? And he AC if you haven't even thought about how this is going to work in the PU is what I exactly. remember having a conversation at Discord with about like because this is a PU issue more than an AC issue, right? Like this is this is what makes combat and non-combat interact with each other. This is arguably the most important spaceship mechanic when it comes to the food chain or the ecosystem of this game. Like this is yeah. piracy, bounty hunting. This is PVP. This is like combat, you know, at, at the basic level, this is everything yes. has to get tied together with how these modes interact with each other. You know, like if you are making master modes, you cannot have a fleet composition without something that, prevents people from running yeah yeah yep so it 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 is so paramount from that standpoint and like you said it has to be paramount the balancing of it yeah. and when and i just what i hope and you you have a closer relationship with yogi than i do uh but my hope is is that like dude the guy's not a trained professional to be on camera and just said the wrong shit you know what i mean and it's not I that he the doesn't PvP know thing. 
Yeah, about mm -hmm. the, we just don't know what we want to do with the Mantis or whatever, right? Oh, okay, it's not yeah. that he doesn't know, it's that he wasn't ready to tell us, mm -hmm. right? They know what they want to do, but they're, yep. they didn't test it yet, so they don't know how it's going to work in practice because we haven't put it into testing yet or whatever. It's not that they don't know, it just made them look unprepared, and I don't buy that they're not prepared, mm -hmm. right? There's mm -hmm. no way they didn't have countless meetings talking about this shit. That, yeah. That'd be crazy. Yeah, because it's like, so it's Throw the such towel in now if mechanic. they didn't. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, like, what if the they, hell? They've yeah. lost the plot if they didn't have conversations about it. Yeah, yeah. They just, yeah, he just wasn't willing to give us the details on a podcast that they don't even know if the mechanic will work functionally, right? So, yeah. Exactly, which yeah, is totally fair. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that, you know, Eve... And we'll we'll wrap this part of it up. But Eve has a really neat mechanic. I love this idea. Right? Is that what does your community think about Eve? Oh, Do they hate no, you talking about that too? You know what? <laughs> they no, they're actually they're actually more accepting of Eve to be honest. Like they actually yeah, really like understand. Eve. Uh, and it's funny because it's so similar to Tarkov in terms of many which is and weird. Type I feel things. like that's a shift. Yeah. I feel like maybe as the games developed, people have been more like, damn, Eve's good. You know, like what Eve did is great. Um, yeah. But back in the day, if you mentioned Eve, whoo, like you'd get all kinds of responses. And it would always be about the spreadsheet simulator. Yeah. I don't want to play a spreadsheet simulator. And it's like, my argument has always been like, th th that company has made 20 years of mistakes you know, and like come to a ultimate conclusion on their game, right? And here's what's crazy about this, Mike, and I use this always in my reacts. You know, they have a higher concurrent players on EVE than they do in New World. Like e EVE Online I mean, this that's day, not hard to do. I have a higher wrong. number of concurrent players. That <laughs> concurrent viewers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, it's like... But isn't it's that crazy, newer, right? Like Amazon it's sad. dropped the ball so hard. But but it's also credit to Eve, you know, a twenty year old game that is yeah. really can be visualized through Excel spreadsheets, you know, like is doing that well still. Like I'm sure they've got more concurrent players than Star Citizen. Do they have more backers? No, but like the amount of people logged into the game at any moment, I'm sure it's way higher. Like because they're for, just for the record, it's twenty to thirty thousand. Is where they hover there's around. something to be dedicated to yeah it's got the meat on the there's bones, a reason right? to log on yeah, yeah it's not just a, a reason to log on but i think it's like and that's the big one for me is like there's just so much like you'd be such a fool to make a space game and not look at what they did right and what they did wrong you know and that's that's how exactly. i look at it i'm like look at the reasons people are still captivated with that game look at the reasons nobody's trying to... about that game yeah, like nobody's trying to make Star Citizen these other games. Yeah. And that's what people mistake when content creators talk about other games is we're mm -hmm. not trying to make Star Citizen Eve or Tarkov. We're trying to take the things that they did yes. well. And because we have a unique opportunity yep. to like you're playing a game that is a husk. Yeah. It's an it, it's not a game, right? It is a husk. And CIG has every opportunity to just cherry pick the things that make sense and build yes. their game to do that and yeah. it's like it is both a horrible thing that they that the game is the way it is today and they mm -hmm. seemingly are not sure about the direction they want to go in a lot of things and simultaneously a great thing because they have every ability to be like yeah these other guys tried this and it didn't work yeah. and there you go yeah and that's the thing and that's like how we get to sniper glint if, if if i if i reference like eve online i'm just talking about the good things and then people will just be like oh i can't believe you want eve online and they're just thinking about the bad things it's like in my mind i'm not even debating the bad things like obviously the bad things are bad we all know they're yeah, yeah. Bad, the bad things are bad it's just, yeah everybody knows that but there's some great things but I, I, what i was trying to get at it originally was there was like as far as in addiction goes there was you could outfit any ship with in addiction um tools right like so but it would have to come at a cost so like an interdiction okay. like component for a ship would go in a weapon slot so imagine a gladius you take off the nose gun they get a device that <laughs> can't shoot but it slows down targets yeah. now here's the counterpoint to it right so they lost a bit of damage to get that ability to do it but then the logistics guy and only the logistic guy will probably do this he is like a blockade running spec on his ship guess what it has okay components he lost a cargo slot right or a mining laser slot and he got a warp stabilizer which makes 
him harder to catch. So it's like preparation in your ship goes a long way and it comes with sacrifice, right? It's like, so like, I love that part of in addiction. It's like, give the guys, like if you want to have a cargo ship, but this is, this ship is a slow boat. It's going to make a huge amount of profit, but you're at risk, you know? And then the counter to that is you've got a speed boat where it doesn't have that much cargo space, but it's got warp stabilizers. It's hard to interdict. It's got high speeds, but you can't take all the cargo. You can only take a fraction of it. You know, like I love that choice before it um, and that prepared. We lose all of that. We lose Mm -hmm. all of that with the way Star Citizen does their ship. Exactly. Because it's just like you you pick an interdiction ship. It's got two size, two guns, which are useless, right? But like, it's like the whole ship but you could make it like customization based and stuff. And I just love that. Like, for example, imagine like in your Caterpillar, you lose a shield slot in favor of warp stabilization or quantum stabilizers that make your ship harder to, harder to interdict. So what does it take? It takes not one Mantis to interdict you. It takes two, you know, like, they, because they, that would be enough to have the ability. Yeah. And they still have the ability to do that. I think when you go to the, <clears throat> to the combat ships like the Gladius, it's like, damn, you can't do that stuff yeah. or the smaller ships. But when you have larger ones that have multiple shields or multiple power plants, you can mm-hmm. maybe sacrifice stuff. It's that's interesting, an interesting way to look at it. Cause the one thing that I think CIG still also has built like kind of a husk of a system that that they can build off of now that they're hopefully designing the actual game mm-hmm. is ship components, right? Yeah. Um, oh man, it needs to and, expand there, doesn't it? Yeah, and I, I would love to take like piggyback off of your comment around Eve and, and the ability to swap things out and and have maybe a unique experience with your ship or one that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Is that like your Mantis example is is perfect? Where well, what if you could make a few changes to your Mantis and and there's there's different paths that you can go down. Yep. With because because unfortunately we are tied to a you're an interceptor you're a car you know you're a cargo ship you're a this you're kind yep. of locked into that it's mm-hmm. almost like um you 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 use new world as an example right yep. is you're almost locked into the i put on this weapon therefore i am a archer or yeah. i put on this weapon therefore i am a bruiser or whatever right sure. so like the the cho- the armor choices that you make or whatever mm-hmm. choose what type of character you are it's not really a skill thing yep the you put on the ship so now i am a interdictor but i could have uh kind of different experiences within the interdictor role based Mm -hmm. on the components that i choose yeah like a high you can have what you want kind of yeah like a high speed mantis that's like barely you know it doesn't even have a second shield slot and it's just all speed low mass something like that you know yeah Yeah. like something crazy Yeah, exactly. You could go, you could push it to certain limits and stuff like that too. So yeah, like I ship fitting is what it's called in Eve is just like, it's a whole nother level. Like, and it's just mm. so cool. Cause you're like, you're just playing, um, you know, Frankenstein with your ship, trying to like make it do weird things. Like people run into your ship and they expect one thing and then you hit them with another and you're like, whoa, what the hell is that freakish thing? You know, like, so I love the aspect of that. And it's just a shame because back in the day we had variety and now it's just been laser repeaters for three years now. Yeah, yeah. It's true. I would just love to see like in other games, they have like names for builds of characters or things, yeah. you know, I would love to hear unique builds for, for ships that yeah. the community creates themselves. Like, and, like Bruiser and- Gladius where it's just shotguns or something yeah yeah yep. but Hell it's yeah. but it's not just the weapon choice that you made it was yeah. it was other choices like engines and power plants and these things play roles into that experience yeah. right uh, like you like get like armor tanky. plating and you lose like a hundred top yeah. speed or something like that yeah yeah, yeah layers like super of tanky ships yeah yeah i love the but, but depth and complexity have, but, always good but it has to have give and take right yeah. and right now Absolutely. it's like we just we we almost never have the takeaway yeah in the star citizen experience you almost never have the negative yeah. and it's like everybody freaking out about the sniper glint thing it's like you got to have some negatives now maybe glint isn't the right choice mm-hmm. to that negative 
but you have to respect that somebody finally came in and was like, yo, but where's like, the, where is the balance in this experience? Yeah. It's not here, boys. So I would like to come in and make some changes. Like, how does the community not get behind the developers who want to do that? I have yep. no clue. For me, like, guys like that that come in or, and, and want to shake things, shake up the, the current experience, which is very unbalanced, non-existent in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. and try to breathe some life into it. Whether it's the right decision or not, we'll find out. But I'm just happy that they're trying something. Yeah. Like, hell, man. Yep. And it's like, how hot is it to take a, the glint off? And I'll tell you what, man. It's super like, easy. Come on. I, I remember there was a, this was early Jump Town, um, the new Jump Town, right? And uh, we went to yeah. Arcorp and oh. um, Greasy Khaleesi was there and he made a video of like sniping us at Jump Town. And for me, I tell it was you Versace what, Rick. <laughs> just you have been hit by Versace like yeah. over and over and over again and they were like, immune oh my God. like we ended up get it got to the point where we brought like a2 bombers and we're trying to like bomb them out of the caves and the cliffs like there was no way we were ever gonna find him like and no. don't get me wrong like a, a a glint that shines like a star would be ridiculous but like if it required yeah. a certain angle or whatever so be it because you know it's a open world game of you know millions and millions of kilometers you know so of course like there had to be some sort of mechanic to it but yeah like there's i'm definitely about them just trying stuff like that for sure and you know Throw add some layers spaghetti at to the, the wall game. and see what sticks yeah it is so much better than doing nothing think yeah. about every mechanic in this video game and how many how many times throughout the 10 12 years that this game is, has been in existence that a feature has sat to rot Every single feature has experienced it at some point, whether it was ship combat, flight, cargo, mining, mining less so than anything, but they, instead of rotting it, they ruined it in a lot of ways and then made it better, <laughs> in my opinion, and others feel, feel it was a lot worse now. But um, it, I think so many times there's just been never enough developers or whatever where things just sit there to rot. Yeah. And I'm just glad that, almost every aspect of the game seems to be getting attention now. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's not the attention that you want, but at least somebody's paying attention to it. Yeah. I can't yeah. knock that. Yep. And I don't think there's been huge complaints. Like, I, like, I don't know. I don't want to get too been insane. In like, like people are, people are losing their mind over it. Oh, so it's kind of hard to crazy. not. But the people yeah. that are complaining about it, like, uh coincidentally a loud bunch like i know who those guys are they troll they're very loud like and they're very passionate about it but you know well, there's a think lot it's... of like military guys from the u.s like yeah. saying this this guy from the uk should come to texas he doesn't know anything about real guns and stuff like that Ugh. and it's like <laughs> you don't you don't need to okay well here's the thing is we're not going to war we're playing a video game yeah exactly so, He's he's making design decisions about making a video game that he thinks are correct. Now, I, I think it's just up to us to prove him wrong if you think mm -hmm. it's wrong. Like, right? mm -hmm. go in there and show how bad it is, and I guarantee that they'll listen. Mm -hmm. Anytime we've sat there and been like, yo, this shit is horrible. Yep. They sometimes will be like, I can't fix it now, but I hear you, and I agree. And that's all you can ask for. And it could, and it, like, how how hard it would it be to, like, nerf it if it's bad? Like, it's not a big deal. Like, just Especially see that. what it's like. Like, like people... Master are, modes? Yeah, no. they riot before like they got their yes. hands off, on it. Like, you know, and they get yeah. so crazy before they even give it a shot. That's been a lot of the yeah. feedback with MM, to be honest. It's funny, like, yeah. and we'll wrap up, we'll wrap up MM, because I wanted to cover the economy and stuff pretty soon. But mm -hmm. a lot of, um, yeah, like... Uh, in my opinion, and like, is this still my opinion? Is this like, do I think MM has a lot of issues? Yeah, like so many. Like in the one v one aspect, the most. Yeah, like it's a real. There's some real issues there. I struggle um, with it, man. But it's such a good framework. Like, if you go to squad battle and it looks like you're looking at a movie, they've done something right, dude. Like, and yeah. now it's about like getting those systems to act appropriately and be fun and engaging in between that. But that's just like balancing, that's twisting some dials and stuff like that. But like 
as a framework, it's so good. And it's funny, when I made those videos, I got hit up by a director, actually. It's funny, content creator privilege. And he was just telling me, he's like, yeah, man, just a framework. And, you know, we're really happy about it. And, like, it's cool to see people see that. But it's so early days, you know? And that's the way I look at mm. it. So um, I've been fine with it. I'm waiting. It definitely needs to grow. I think that they're going to iterate on it more. And I can say it publicly anyway, but Yogi's very much of the opinion it's like right now it's all hands on decks to just get this into the pu and to make sense and then they're going to dial into the intricacies of the classes and the different ship personalities and how these mechanics interact and stuff like that but it's it's just about getting I mean, the haven't we already in the been game. through that though what do you like, mean didn't they already tell us the last flight model like the last time they were like, all right, we're bringing it all back to certain archetypes. And we've had just lasers for that entire time. Oh. Does that concern you at all? Or are you yeah. confident yeah. that this time is going to be different? Like, yeah. or, or are we just, I, I are tell we you just what, too invested? You if, know? if they go to reinvent the wheel, I'm going to be fucking screaming. Like I am yeah. so tired of the reinvention of the wheel. Cause you're not wrong. Like we got told, oh, it's only going to be like this for a little while. So like we're going to go straight on to balancing. That never came. And that was two years ago, right? Like that, that balancing never came. It got scrapped and then they started working on master modes. But yeah, I'm under the assumption this is the last time they're doing the rebuild. Uh, <laughs> dock on wood. Uh, but um, yeah, I hope that they start actually trying to get a game out of this now. Because at what point... Does it become a scam if they're just going to keep reinventing everything? So yeah, you're not wrong. But no, I'm a I'm 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 a bit I'm a bit hopeful. When I'm not it comes even to it. of that. I'm not even of that camp. I'm just curious if you were no. It's concerned been a at all. massive. Yeah, I think I brought it up on a podcast I did with you a long time ago for PvP. But yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like this needs to be it. And um, yeah. and that's why like I've just like especially with our guys i'm like yo this is if there's any time to get passionate about feedback do or die you know like it's this time like at this point you can't sit and complain if you're not in there testing it if you're not in there like looking at exactly what's wrong and talking about it and stuff like that like otherwise you gotta sit there you're a passenger yeah. in this um and so that's why we're like if, so active in it we are so but if they like, don't act on it yeah they're gonna lose everyone again yeah and, I, and 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 that's the thing too like a lot of people discredit like and i get it right like i get it people discredit the sweaties they're like oh it's not a game for sweaties right like it's whatever but the reality is and i i, I say this and i take my ego and all this out of the equation we've just discovered the truths that other people are going to discover three or six months down the line you know it's like yeah. oh the best way to do a hornet is to go up straight for them backwards and then they can never gain on you, you know? And that's because there's not enough forward. And if you put this in the community's hands, after three months of PVPing and playing, everybody's just going to be backstrafing against each other. That's it. Of like, course. so, you know, and that's, and that's where we're trying to be like critical with the feedback and stuff is we're just beating people to the punch and <laughs> discovering where people are going to head quicker. Cause yeah. it's the same ceiling now back, back in live, there was different ceilings. You could, get really good at going this route you get really good at going that route now with the archetypes they have the same ceiling you get if you and me are really great at interceptors we're playing the exact same way you know like you get I mean you get really good at a heavy fighter we're both back strafing trying to get guns on and that's it you know so there's um stuff like that but no i am hopeful of it and i'm hopeful i'm more hopeful of the big picture like i am yeah. like I'm struggling. We need with, more people involved. Yeah, like we need. I need to see like security orgs going up against piracy orgs. I need to see Jump Town. Not everybody just flies up a hundred kilometers and leaves Jump Town the moment the fight happens. Yeah. You know, like I want, I want the to see a hammerhead tied in. Yeah, like I want to see a hammerhead like just hovering over yeah. Jump Town and it actually being a threat. You know? Exactly. Exactly. And that's the that's the game we all bought. You know, and I feel like it's finally coming there with mm it's just got but just yeah. to be clear it's just a framework it's got so so long to go the developers are knowing that you know it's fine it'll get way more detail there'll be way more meat on the bone way more depth complexity it just works at a fundamental level now for the first time since 3.4 i would say like it's yeah. the first i think time the average player worked. will also like i said it, it wasn't as much of a oh 
you know, like smack mm-hmm. in the face mm-hmm. for it to be there. I just was playing and I didn't even notice it. Mm-hmm. I was just doing my thing. Yeah. Right. It's a, it's a very minor change for the average player. I think in combat a little different. We'll see with some of the new AI changes that you're seeing in Arena Commander. They're crazy good. Mm-hmm. So we'll see if those make it into the PU and do anything. But because um, I'm just thinking of like, you know, your, your, your kind of casual bounty hunter player that just does yeah. like the PVE bounties, like what their experience might be like and change. But uh, for the most part, I think most people will probably feel relatively positive with the changes coming in because I don't think that they're going to change the experience so drastically that people freak out, right? Oh, the drastic it's... changes for the for the sweaty PVPers that things have kind of changed a lot for them. And it what drives me so crazy, man, is like like when people call it like arcadey and stuff. It's like what were you playing in live? Like like arcadey just means like by definition just means it's a game that's playable right like th- that's what an arcade is it's an arcade game star is in live it didn't work dude like that the number yeah. one plus one did not equal two like that's the that was the problem so it's like yeah don't get me wrong like i'm frustrated with some of the issues that are in master modes that i would have wanted to get fixed and they've mentioned they know their issues too assuming they're going to fix them but yeah it didn't work before so like what are we praising about the past i think some people are just afraid to let go of something you know like that and this is yeah, coming even from the old old models what do you both Same thing yeah yep every they all have their issues Those didn't work either yeah we just need we need crg to just commit to something and just stay on it you know instead of just keeping yep. reinventing yeah for the now, entire I, game yeah not yeah. just master modes yep <laughs> Um, all right, now I've got questions. I've barely gotten to Eddie, so let's let's stop. Do you remember the big griefing podcast we had? Remember back when? Okay, so let me take you back in time. That I, I actually on? went back. You you hosted it. You hosted yeah. it, and it was when no on your pe- channel. No, your channel. Your channel. Oh, remember? I don't remember. I this went one. on it. Burks went on it. Captain Richard went on it. It was when we got warning. Mm. Shadow of Moses got the. It was. Yeah, before yeah, yeah. the it, like it was before even stream sniping was a rule you know like it was yeah. way back in the day um it was the, you around a, the xylo post right yeah 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 xylo made a post and then i think three or six months later um some of the sdc guys just sunday you know sunday and stuff like they got yep. they got banned for a patch um and mm-hmm. then our or got all warnings to be honest some of our warnings were deserved but what they did and this will trigger your memory a lot of the subject on those tickets were excessive pvp we got warned for and they like didn't mean excessive pvp or they walked it back instantly but they're like yeah. no nah, it was something else you know like but uh and it kicked up a firestorm like it was my old twitter account but the, like it had all of the community team and that had Burks went on like a pad ramming spree in protest <laughs> on stream. Like it was haywire. But do you remember those podcasts? Because this, I really feel like in the last couple months, we've almost, it's like Battlestar Galactica. We're reliving the same thing, you know, <laughs> thousands of years later. Like it feels like we're there again. But do you remember that I, back I, in the day? I remember specifically Richard saying that like this stuff got so out of hand that people were stream sniping me not even in Star Citizen anymore. <laughs> they were like following him to other games. To yeah, no, I heard about this. <laughs> and I was like, bro, holy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, I, no, the worst guys I ever were... got was like stream sniped in New World. <laughs> that, that and I was like, you don't even wait, lose anything in that, that, that game. That might have been us. That might have been us. I think it was, yeah. But <laughs> he Got you outside it, of that dungeon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, I think I remember this. You know, I'll tell you a funny story real quick. You, you remember mm. Harry Potter, the dorky kid, you know, naughty as shit. Dude, yeah, I remember, it was like, we went, I, I was fighting. <laughs> we had to tell him world, to cut his shit out. We're like, yo, you got to stop, dude. Like, you need to behave. You know what he did? He runs over to Boy Snoodle in New World. He's in the middle of a forest, 
right? And Noodle goes, yeah, oh, it was look. me and Moist. We were together. <laughs> he goes, he goes, look, there's Harry. So he prones in the grass, right? And we're talk- like, with like, and Harry's doing this off Discord, okay? Harry's not in my org. I'm not responsible for Harry. Harry goes and cuts the tree down next to when <laughs> Moist was proning to, like, act as if he was just cutting trees by accident. It's like, dude, it was the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. It's like, he really it thought so he'd go obvious. for that. <laughs> yeah. Like, and then he finds Moist, and I was like, oh, my God, like, you're a dick. <laughs> it's the... So he's like, out of every tree in this forest, he picks the one that Noodle was on. I was like, you dumbass. <laughs> it was so you know what? fucking dumb. Every, every time we mention New World, you know what makes me so sad? <coughs> I will never have the day one experience in Star Citizen. Oh, it, There's something fucking magical about that, hey. There, it, Level there's something zero. magic about not knowing what's behind the curtain. And that's the that's the downside with Star Citizens. You always know what's behind the curtain, right? Like, yep. and that's and that really, I'll, we can lead into this actually. Um, actually, no, we won't. We're gonna stick on the griefing thing, okay? But um, yeah, that's my frustration too. Is like I miss the days of like you get like an expansion and then it's just like a wealth of content you had no idea about, you know. But yep. problem with open development is that it's open, isn't it? Yeah, but it's got its have, negatives. That's one of them. We have games like Dune coming out, which we can capture that experience. I don't know if you're looking at that. We got bit of ashes and I've, stuff like that. I would. I am so not interested in Dune because of who's really? making it. Oh, Only because you're of who's jaded making it. on those guys, right? You've on played, Conan. Yeah, they yeah. did. A, I thought they did a terrible job with Conan. It, it weird. I I think they did a great job with Conan. Um from a kind of like group up with my friends, f- like five of my friends in PVE, yeah. but they're talking about making an MMO and they didn't prove they can do it with Conan. So I don't think they can do it with... with uh, was Conan Dune. advertised as an MMO, was it? I don't know, but it was like the best they can get on their servers were 70 players and the, and it was like the servers couldn't handle that many. Yeah. It was terrible. Yeah, fair so, enough. Like... How are you making Dune and and the way that they that they've shown it in the trailers? You got no shot. Really, I feel like, dude, I'm on some. You know what it is for me? Um, it's I played and I know you played this game, Last Oasis. Last oh, Oasis. God, that game was oh, almost perfect. It was it was the best two weeks I've had on the internet, Mike. Like the first two weeks of that game coming out was the highlight yep. two weeks of my entire gaming life. Like it was. But if you're not Part of a so Zerg, good. It, it eventually dies yeah. with games then, like that, unfortunately, but two it was weeks, amazing. At the two-week mark, I remember they opened up the big servers. We sailed in there on our crawler and just got picked apart by like 50 dudes, and then that was it. Yep. That was Last yeah, Oasis was like, done. Pack it up. <laughs> yep. <laughs> pack but it up. My, it was a good ride. Dude, I, that was such a good game. Like, and all, like yeah. we always joke in Discord, like, oh, take me back to the sands. And so, like, that's why we're, like, on some Dune copium, because we're just thinking Last Oasis the whole time, I think. But It might work, but Conan had so much potential that, that it did not achieve. Yeah. Conan was great yeah. in so many I'd ways, be, I, but... I don't think I ever played it, so that would be... Dude, we sure. had... We had... The, when it launched, we had a server that was, like... It it was the only time the entire Star Citizen community came together. Oh my it was like God, a I bunch of content this. creators. CIG had a, a clan, <laughs> and we were destroying each other's bases, and people were going super hard. It was oh, it was Bro, amazing. I remember, I remember you amazing. telling me, you, you telling me that like the biggest tyrant on that set was Board Gamer because he was just online twenty. He's a psychopath. <laughs> he is an absolute psychopath. If Board gets into something, so Board's very open about this. <laughs> Board's yeah. bi- bipolar, right? Okay. So if you're bipolar, so typically um, you get into like some manic states. And what, mm-hmm. if Board is in one of those moods, you can you cannot stop, stop the train. <laughs> no. And he, so somebody killed us in a, in a, I think in an unreasonable way, like when we were, off, they offline raided, it was cringe. Yeah. And like, we're all kind of friends and we were all experiencing the game and then they offline raided. It was like, mm-hmm. damn, this is lame. So he went, Balls to the wall, and you can make a god. You could become a god in the game. 
and he became a giant squid and just literally <laughs> squidding to the shit out of their their base and just destroyed everything to the point where they had to quit oh um, dude imagine but getting he, griefed he out of a game like, like board gamer <laughs> board gamer so is a sweat you, dude, you, you may not so assume crazy. he is by his content but board gamer is a sweat what a legend everything he does uh, good and, stuff. and do you blame him for not sweating star citizen no you can't i don't no nah. wait yep. till he does yeah dude imagine imagine we're all you know, living in a board game, a ruled Stanton or, you know, you might, system. you legitimately Sheesh. might. Yeah. Gosh, that is so good. Don't sleep on board. I'm telling you. <laughs> but yeah, like, um, no, you're right. Especially if, yeah, like that's the problem, right? Is, you know, Star Citizen will forever kind of feel a bit, hold on, I got a cat. Uh, will forever <laughs> feel a bit like, um, you know, working, I guess, won't it? Especially when you're a content creator, that's the sad reality. It'd be nice to relive a second life where we weren't obsessed and had all the development under a microscope and instead we could, you know, come in at the 15 year mark and just enjoy it fresh. Gosh, imagine yeah. not having have to have gone every through once it. In a while. Yeah. I can't wait to turn on my stream and not go, what am I going to talk about today? I can't wait to turn on my stream and go, I have 500 things to do. Mm -hmm. Which one do I want to do today, right? Mm -hmm. What uh, it, it it just won't. It'll maybe, be so different. Maybe that'll be the one point release. You know, like once they've got <clears throat> it in enough, then they're not. When dependent. do you think that is? I don't know, man. Like I got roasted on a video because I'm under the assumption it would be sooner than later, like within a year. <laughs> but bro, you're crazy. How? Yeah. I don't know. How? I don't know. Like, but it wasn't like and maybe go, go i just download was... evo now and go look at what's in there and that was six months ago yeah that's six month old yeah, content good point. that they yeah. showed yeah that's... how the fuck are you gonna make one now i get where you're going with the six month stuff because they have yeah. like yeah it's a good like point. just put just realize that was half of a year we are about half of a year out i think it was they for me it's just like i was so weirded out by that announcement that i was like like if they've made that announcement and it's two years out like why the hell even make that announcement like was that that was what was running through my mind like i was it's I, not more I think about it's what's super missing simple. but why are they it, doing it's, it it's it's not that deep mm -hmm. it is so would you consider like i just had a conversation today about star citizen being a tech demo mm -hmm. and there's nothing wrong with it being a tech demo a lot of people put like this negative connotation on those words like oh star citizen is just a tech demo it's shit mm -hmm. like to some extent yes it is shit but the the idea of it being a tech demo has always been like trying to get to the server meshing thing. It's been a challenge. Nobody's looking at them and going, you know, you're stupid or whatever. Well, some people mm -hmm. might be, but I'm not. And it's just been a challenge and they haven't been able to achieve it. They are mm -hmm. they've made it their lives harder by making the game bigger and bigger and bigger before solving the problem in the first place. But whatever. To to get to the point is that letter came out the moment that they were sure that they did it the moment i jumped from stanton to pyro that letter started to get writ written or it was already written and it mm -hmm. was getting edited and getting ready to be posted mm -hmm. right and all that letter says to me is we are done being a tech demo and we want to start making the game yep so hold your get you know strap in boys all the people who you know, have been enjoying the experience now, this shit's about to change. That's how yep. I looked at it. And it's yep. not about the change quickly, but our, our, it, it is, we are moving away from proving that we can make Star Citizen. We just did. Yeah. I feel like that's what they were trying to say. Yep. Then we had the later server meshing tests, which, which are a little bit debatable if they did or not yet, because we saw so many issues. But mm -hmm. so like, again, the future ones are going to really prove that out if they did or if they didn't. But I think in their minds, it's like, all right, we we climbed over that last hurdle and now it's it, we are shifting our focus towards something i i think it is minimum two years away yep minimum mm -hmm. and there's no shot because think about all the things they said that they have a long exhausted list of all the things that need to be in 1.0 first mm -hmm. off that list is going to shrink second there's no way that list like dude again look at the cars in 323 90 percent like 
85 percent of them are like visual improvements to the fucking moby glass and shit yeah. like that right yeah 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 yep think about all the things that actually have to happen he, here's a good question then um how do you feel about mining where it's at if they're talking about 1.0 release is it what you need it to be mining mining is perfectly fine as long as they deliver crafting yep yep then, so you're, then you're you just can fine start with to it tweak as a it gathering where it needs tool. to be yeah okay because it's hard to be push it further it's hard to push it further or find where it needs to be adjusted until mm -hmm. you're crafting with it yeah like why like where do these where do these uh ores where do you find them or how yeah. difficult they should be to mine should be based off of their their crafting recipes that they end up in not mm -hmm. you know like the rarity yeah. the, all those things so i feel like the act of mining is fine yeah. i think it's, some people don't like it and feel like it's been ruined but i think it's great um it could definitely everything could use probably, tweaks. But. You're probably looking at it like there's a two part to this, right? And the second part's the crafting aspect, right? Like, so you're like, always has been. Yeah, I'm just looking at it like an MMO player. Like, what mm -hmm. the fuck, man? Nobody just mines; they mine something and, and they it, sell it to somebody who makes something else. Sure, there's always that make something else aspect of it, right? Yeah, was, good point. There, what what game? What MMO have you played where you everything you get it's like in the new game world, turns right? into money? <laughs> It's like you want you get a mining pick and you just mine a rock like there ain't much to it but it's all the yeah. stuff that getting that rock leads to right yes so. exactly it's what you do after you turn it yeah. into bars and do you just sell those bars on the marketplace mm -hmm. maybe but I sell it on the marketplace to another player yeah you don't even do that in this game you know like yeah it, it's it's one of those things where and gosh there's, oh, there's no I wish desire was... yeah and this is like. This perfectly pivots to like where I wanted to go with this too. Like that is such the issue with this game, right? It's there's like no desire. There's no well. The big one is too right. Is like if you're selling it to a bunch of NPCs that don't care left or right, it's just got, you're selling it into the void, right? Like you're just selling it to a vendor, essentially. And they're not even hiding it, right? Yep. Like the. The, the the current system that exists is you we all know how it works it's like every mm -hmm. 10 minutes it just ticks back to the uh like to the equilibrium that it was at before you mm -hmm. sold mm -hmm. so like the prices fluctuate very little and Ugh. the amount that they buy and the amount that they sell are always the same right and this it's is like every this it's, is, it's like an open book and yeah. it's just boring yeah and this is and this is like i harp on this because like in every video like honestly mike every video somehow i harp on the economy is like i mean brother it, 10 years ugh, of streaming it's talking so about this. Bad. 10 years and 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 i get the same guys in my comments and if this is one of you guys you guys are a dork okay but like they're like <laughs> oh it's too early for an economy i'm like oh shut up like shut up please. it's been a decade yeah it's been a decade and the thing is is you can't argue for that because people are how how do do i go from a hundred viewers average to four to five hundred viewers average talking about the same thing never mm -hmm. changing it's because mm -hmm. people are yearning for that experience yep. now that's what yep. it is is because the game has come far enough to where people feel that it can start supporting these things the people yep. who, who feel that it's too early are now in the minority where they were yep. the majority before. Yep. And I think CIG is recognizing that as well. Same thing with the letter. I think they're feeling that it's time to make the shift of like, we hit that hurdle. We're not, we're not letting Chris yeah. take it any further. And yep. it's time to, to build within the framework Content. that we have now. Make it a game. Yeah. yeah Cause it, it just like, yep. it, it, it lacks a soul, you know, like it's like, 100%. um, I remember like you used to give a lot of criticism to the PVPs. It's like, oh, you know, like they always have drama with each other. It's like, cause that's the only mechanic to make content out of each other. Like there's no gap or any bridging mechanic to bring people close together. Like the big one for me and where I'm most frustrated with the economy is that like we used to have 
don't remember if you remember this term, but it was like the Laronite rush, which is where yeah, everyone was getting Laronite and hauling Ariel. it. And then, yeah, and that created PvP, Bezda. piracy, storyline, drama, orgs teaming up. Like, it was the best thing because the guys hauling mm -hmm. it were so compelled to do it because it was new to them, fresh to them. And it was a specific meta route, like, or a couple routes. And it was just such a hot spot, you know? And it's like we... And, and that's like my biggest disappointment with cargo hauling. It's like nowadays, and I, one of my guys was complaining about this in Discord today. You can get a reclaimer. You can fly out into the asteroid belt, get a random mission from the mission team from a random ship that just magically appeared out of a hat. There was no story to the ship crashing. There's no nothing. It just spawned up an instance of a crashed ship. You go salvage it for 10 million an hour just go sell it at Grim Hex, <laughs> right? So it's like when you're pumping gigantic amount of the economy, rabbit out of a hat, you know, which is away from any players or any interaction, you know, in some, you know, spot that you're not going to run into anyone in. It's just like, it doesn't feel like they're taking the economy seriously at all at that point. Like you'd expect if a tree that grows money spawned in an asteroid field, you'd expect it to be contested or to be shared or anything right and that's the problem is like the ways to make money in this game are so random and they're in these pockets of space that no one's going to go to you know like they can you can pull gigantic chunks of the economy out of nothing and i just worry about that right like i you would think that the most profitable would be the most dangerous or the most contested you know, yeah. and that was what and was that, so great about the Laronite rush. Everyone knew where it was. Everyone knew that that's where you went to gamble. And there was so much convergence of the game. And I always call cargo hauling the lifeblood of this game. Because when you're mining, you mine ore. The ore probably needs to be transported at some point, right? In, in the factory crafting process. You know, you've got trade routes. You've got piracy is justified by needing to get the haulers. You've got security need to protect the haulers. Bounty hunters the criminal element versus the um, the lawful element of the game. Like there's so much ties around the movement of these haulers and there's just no, you know, direction with it. It feels like there's no meta routes. There's no. And, and that's how it is now in live of that mechanic. That's how, that's how it is in live now. Yeah. Right. And that's your issue with it. Like, yeah. What ha my the fear state of hauling and, and I, right now. In comparison, my, my fear is the future. <clears throat> yeah. So the future could be very similar in the sense of the all the hauling is done via missions. And yep. what is does that make the routes completely random? How's yep. that going to be? What what my hope is is that like the most commonly run routes, or my my hope, and this is again hu huffing some copium. My dream would be that certain sensical routes that that players can learn that mm -hmm. makes sense like uh like we know hurston is a place that makes weapons we know r corp is a place that makes all sorts of ship components and engines and and uh, microtech makes certain things right and the 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 demand for certain commodities at places like that mm -hmm. and more importantly at the stations above them at the cargo decks being a thing and mm -hmm. maybe it makes sense that there's certain like the trade route between the portressor on microtech to Everest harbor mm -hmm. should be easy to contest like it should mm -hmm. be easy to interdict a player mm -hmm. that is cargo hauling that route mm -hmm. and my hope is is that a pirate would have could hit everybody yep or have to make the choice of let me scan that ship let it go. Pay me a thousand. Pay me two thousand, and, and let and we'll let you go. Mm -hmm. Right? I don't. I don't got time for you. Let him go, and then then the big, you know, the gold one or the lantern night ship comes, right? Mm -hmm. Like from the old days, and yeah. then you hit that one or something, yeah. right? Is that you're constantly, you're there. It's a route that's run often, and when they cross your path, you hit them. But, mm -hmm. but the fear is the future might be like, well, what if the routes are completely random, similar to what happened with salvage? I remember Hannah from from I. I don't know if she's still in Mongrel Squad or not, but like when mining was getting updated, is 
the what where where where's the where's everybody going to refine their material and it's mm-hmm. like wherever it doesn't matter anymore yeah there's no right? best and, place and to it was go just to. like you could f- feel no. the air just come out of her you know because it was yeah. like it doesn't matter yeah like i was expecting like maybe like you know this asteroid belt was like really good for containium and then highly contested and stuff like that and then it's like but quantanium is just evenly distributed across the entire moon, you know, and then you could refine it at any across outpost. the entire game. Yeah, all the valuable stuff worth mining is is across the entire game, and that's why it needs crafting because they're kind of just waiting. Because mm-hmm. if you look, the the they they give you the context clues with mining, is that they have mentioned that the low end materials are going to be common and in nearly every crafting recipe or something like that. But those are not evenly distributed across the game. Those are in those pockets. Yep. So now you start paying attention to, well, all right, copper is really prevalent in Hurston, but it's mm-hmm. really important for the crafting recipes over here. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to hit that route and go for that material. And you know maybe one day, like again, the game lacks so much soul without it. Like you said, like you went on this whole thing about, all right, we're we're gonna have people covering, you know, and and they're going down doing these routes, and all these people are working together, but mm-hmm. nobody is, very, not nobody, very few people are going to do those things because the soul isn't there. Is like yep. there's there's no like major necessity. goal that everybody's working together yeah. to achieve, which I think crafting. I think crafting is always like you said, the lifeblood of the game is cargo hauling mm-hmm. yes mm-hmm. but i think it the 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 heart cargo hauling's like is, the gathering crafting. for crafting yeah yeah it's like it's it, the, it's what pumps the blood yeah hauling ha- yeah exactly yeah the heart is the crafting that's the destination that you're trying to haul all this cargo to yeah and that was that was always my concern right is everyone back in the day um you know, when Tony, Tony Z did his presentations, they're like, this is great. This is great. I sat there going, this is horrible. Like we're stuffed. Like, because, and my concern was always this, the percentages everyone gives, right? Which is the nine to one. 90, 10. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Crazy that you just guessed that, right? But the nine to one aspect ratio that everyone gives, it's like, if that's the case, then 90% is void. You know, it's like 90% is behind closed curtains. Um, and I worried that, you know, Eve has captured the greatest economy in a game, and it's the one that you get the Kotaku articles about. It's the one that ends up in the news, you know, on TV. It's the one where you get these crazy stories of betrayal and stuff happen. But when it's nine to one NPC to player, it's like, what, what, what is, what's interesting about that? You know, like what if you are? I, holding... I would argue a lot. I potentially a lot. And I would argue potentially a lot. And I am very much of the PvP risk and reward MMO style of game, okay? Mm -hmm. Like, I am a fan of that, so I don't want to get flamed in the comments for this. But Mm -hmm. the, the, it just, it just really comes down to how well they decide to do this is, um, it, it doesn't have to be, I'm, I try. I just want to make sure I frame my thoughts correctly and don't look stupid here. The the not having the risk be 100 percent from PvP or other players is a good mm-hmm. thing. So the the going to pyro shouldn't just be risky because players can do whatever they want. Going to pyro should be risky because the NPCs should also be so fucking sweaty because they're able yep. to survive in a place like pyro, yep. right? So when you do come across an NPC, that shit should be just as dangerous and just as scary. So it's the it's the the definition of the system that defines the risk and reward, not what the players are capable of doing in those systems, right? Mm-hmm. And then the story comes down to and where where the soul of the game comes from is the stories that the people create in the games and when you do come across players what those experiences are like and again the soul has to come from giving uh reasons for players to to interact with each other i think they've tried with things like jump town 
But I think what it really comes down to is going back to more like Eve style things of really meaningful territory to control things that are worth fighting over. And those yep. things have to be big and give big advantages and be crazy for, for the, the amount of people to come together and I think fight for a common goal. Right. The answer for me was always like necessity, right? Like necessity what do you mean by being that? the answer to all problems, right? Like you got, for example, and this is like I use necessity and like a player driven economy go hand in hand. And I say that because like, say, for example, yeah. you're a piracy org that's operating in some system we we'll use the Virgil system, for example. Yeah, you need food and supplies shipped to you. You need fuel mm -hmm. shipped to you. You need to have, um, you know, economy stuff like just UEC in general maybe ship components that are provided from more popular systems that aren't, you know, a shell of a system like Virgil is where it's just a ghost town, you know, like well, you've got to bring not, in stuff. Not to cut you off, but how disappointing was the Pyro preview when it's like, bro, I'm repairing, rearming, there's fucking stations yeah, everywhere. Too free, what too is easy. This shit? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I wanted it to be yeah. more of a sandbox, but instead it's got everything you need in it. Too much convenience. Yeah. And um, hopefully and that was just for the, for the, citizen con fans yeah. right and then yeah, eventually like as like... more systems come online they can pull back yeah some of the creature comforts maybe but yeah yeah like know. a lot less content leave it up to the players on how that system turns out right like it, yeah. not every system has to be riddled with content and narrative but my point being right if you create necessity then you create relationships you know so it's like if the griefing orgs for done running example, like if the griefing, yeah, exactly. If the griefing orgs are dependent on, you know, the mining orgs for their mining materials, and then they're dependent on the hauling orgs for their food supplies, you know, and they're re dependent on um, security for this system or something like that, or trade deals with this group, you create those dependencies, then things get very interesting, I think. But when it's gapped by NPCs and you got the nine to one ratio, then they're instead dependent on the system and not each other. And like that for me is like, I don't know, it's just bland. It's not interesting. Nothing happens unexpected because you've only got 10% of room to play with, you know, is the way I visualize that. And I just worry okay. that when you don't have those dependencies that um, it's like, it, it's just stale because, you know, it's like your org is going to go mine and then you're selling it to a vendor. You know, but instead of like, well, that's what, let me, let me stop you ahead. there because that, that's the, that's the key there mm -hmm. is it's not the, the issue isn't the nine to one. It's yeah. that there's no necessity in the game and that yeah. everything is purchasable everywhere. Yes. Right. And, and we, we argued before that they did a good job with the, with the weapons we think, and then they didn't do much with anything else since then, but the nine to one experience could just be, well, for every nine players that are hanging out and going in and out of hangers at Hurston, mm -hmm. one of them's a player and, and the rest make the game feel more alive. Mm -hmm. But the like that doesn't mean that the experiences that you have uh, are always going to be a nine to one or they, you know, the NPCs are going to be enjoying the game more than I am, I don't it's think. More about like I think the real issue there is that the game is just, everything is hand it to you and it's, it's just, like there's the no... quanta thing you know like it's like the outpost for example say there's a ground outpost in which you're heavily reliant on getting fuel and rearming from well that outpost despite you maybe pirating people that come to it doesn't matter because there's been 90 percent of quanta or there's been quanta that behind closed doors have delivered fuel and rearming supplies to it the whole time right so it's like even though you're there and you're having I think an you're misunderstanding it maybe i am maybe i, I am. think you are i just worry like that the... the economy is flowing and resources are moving around but they're doing it so invisibly through this quanta stuff whereas if it was player driven you'd see the economy in front of you every time it couldn't yeah. get around you you know like once again i am 100 percent for a player driven economy in star sure. and it would be a wonderful thing sure but but I challenge you to do a react of some of these old quanta videos yeah. and really listen to what Tony says. And the background simulation 
informs what you see in front of you and mm -hmm. the probability volume thing. So if all of these things are happening around that one location that you want to lock down, yeah, then just like if, say it's like your like a, theoretically a place where your org is living at, you know? yes, then theoretically, all of those NPCs that are in the background simulation, because you are in that probability volume, if they're going there to quote unquote, try to even things out, mm -hmm. they will jump into the area that you're in. Mm -hmm. And if it's a security one, then eventually you would get overwhelmed and taken over. Mm -hmm. Or you can keep bringing more and more and more of your friends and making it more and more difficult for the NPCs. And then whatever happens, happens. That's mm -hmm. how I always viewed it was mm -hmm. this probability volume thing is what informed the player, what they saw. And if nobody did anything, it prevented the, the economy from stagnating mm -hmm. because that happens in player run economies too. So I always looked at it as like, there are some benefits to the system, but I way prefer is, Albion online that, like, or, or Eve. Maybe like stagnation is what creates opportunity, you know, like, or something like that. Like that's sure. like, you know, say no one's mining this ice from this ice belt in this system. So that creates opportunity. This org moves there. Well, this org now decides as a, as a response to this opportunity presenting itself, now some story or narrative is happening over at that ice belt. And I just worry it that- It can also make a dead game feel way more alive. Yeah, yeah. And there's you know, push and pull on probably a lot of it, right? But yeah. that for me is was my concern, was just like a lot of this, you know, selling into the void aspect or a lot of this just hand wavy magic, you know, you don't see a lot of behind closed curtains um feeling to the economy you know and i love the idea that if you you know through necessity you can create dependencies on orgs like i know and i wanted to talk to you about this a bit but like your 30k org had deals i know i don't know if some of them are private some of them are public but none, you, none of them are private okay well you had like some relationships for gun running and salvaging and mining with some prominent just PvP gun running orgs. really okay well with yeah. some pvp orgs though right and it was because yeah. of that necessity and the economy solely between you and that organization they needed to get it they needed to couldn't purchase it from the vendors right this is the key aspect of it mike you couldn't get exactly. those guns from the vendors but if you got those guns from the vendors they wouldn't give a shit would they you wouldn't be worth the that, 500 uec you would have underpriced the vendors for Guess what happened? What? That's exactly what happened. They sold and the guns very anyways, upsetting. right? Or the, or the yeah, guns well, came too easy or what? Sorry. No, they ended up selling rail guns at yep. Invictus. Oh, right. And, yep. and everybody who we were selling to bought five, six hundred because they sold yep. them for way. We were selling them for 200,000 each and people were willing to buy them because the because of all the other problems with the economy yep. and inflation that got created. So the the nobody bought anymore and it killed That's the whole thing. That is my biggest problem right there. That and this captures is after the, entire the economy team came online. Ugh. And it's like, bro, do you guys know what you're doing? Yeah. Take um, things away. So, Don't give them to us. Yeah. Like, comfort is not a good thing. It just makes us lazy and bored. You know, like, yeah, like yeah. I, I want Pyro to be scavenging for things, you know, like. Yeah. And guess what was in Pyro? You could buy fucking railguns there. Convenience and I, everywhere. And, yeah. Yeah. And it was like, I kind of am okay with that. Because what then then what sort of interesting dynamic do you create from buying mm -hmm. them in Pyro and bringing them to Stanton? But mm -hmm. the you know I think it was way better. It was way more of an MMO to grind, yeah, and find them on NPCs and find them in in loot containers and do the grind, and it was so much more satisfying to build those relationships with people because it turned into, yeah, we sold you rail guns, but then when I got attacked, I would at that org mm -hmm. and they would, if they were online, they came to help mm -hmm. because the relationship was symbiotic in that way is they were always looking for fights and we were out there. We had, you know, we were as we basically doubled the size of their org yep. by being out there and occasionally getting attacked. So the, the opportunities on both sides were great. And it's just like, if you add a little friction to the game, all of a sudden players get way more resourceful. And all 
you have people working together and not arguing on spectrum about oh my gosh, semantics yes. of whether you know star citizen is an alpha a pre-alpha or you know it's like nobody has time for that bullshit because they got they got to play yep and that's what like that's like that's what i desperately crave you know is to watch like Same. salty mike's podcast about like you know hit their relationships that they've got with groups and their bad relationships they've got with others and whatever huge group and dealerships they've got you know are partners in and stuff like this like real content mm -hmm. but i just i'm concerned with if it's npcs you're selling everything to like if you're gun running for npcs if you're gun running if you're mining materials to craft these tools to sell them to these npcs it like it just for me it kills a lot of the story and that's what i worry about you know is like you play tarkov is that yeah you play yeah, tarkov for sure for and sure. so so if so if you if you make it make sense or if mm. at least you add a progression bar to that system of mm -hmm. sure i'm grinding i'm mining i'm salvaging i'm crafting and then i'm selling this shit to the npcs what do i get mm. from the npcs so mm. now you know are people are you going to be willing to do that that whole fucking loop of mining refining salvaging refining then no crafting way. and then selling to the npcs you don't want to do that yeah. shit i'll do it yep. and then you're going to pay me to for the components that were crafted by that npc yeah or that i earned the reputation for that you weren't willing to yeah so that friction is still there so it can be an npc that i interact with but in mm -hmm. the end we interact with each other because of it Mm -hmm. right as long as that bond is still there and there is a necessity like you yeah. say for yeah. you to have this quantum drive that that this group makes let's say mm -hmm. or for a better example like shields or guns because pvp yep what if they make engineered components of some kind to yep. use a an, an, an elite dangerous reference mm -hmm. but you don't want to go through the process to get those mm -hmm. well i'll do it and then we'll sell them to you and we right? need that's, and, what, and it that's needs how to be i always like, played mmos it needs to be a steady flow right like like i don't need you to just give us 20 shield uh generators and then you never and talk to done. me again yeah exactly so that's why the components need to like you know lose on death and stuff like that like exactly. but yeah like i exactly i hope that bond stays there and I, I, or gets growed upon you know i hope we need to lean on players and the community of the game you know uh yeah. for more aspects than just a few like i hope it's i hope crafting isn't just 10 items you know i hope we're talking like you know hundreds and hundreds of different items stuff like that like i hope that these dependencies go far beyond just you know you know maybe you can craft some good guns and some good shield gens and some armor sets you know like yeah, I hope they need because... to be incredibly meaningful experiences i yeah. feel like because that's they, the problem they, right now, right? Everyone just has too much rep, money. There's nothing to go to it. Yeah, like rep crafting all these things need to unlock experiences for players. Yeah, I don't know if P PvP is a unique thing where every experience is unique, right? So Jump Town's always been pretty a pretty good example of that. <laughs> every time you go to Jump Town, it's always a little bit different. Sometimes yep. they're conga lining. Sometimes it's all at war. It's you never know what you're gonna get. Yep. So PVPers are are unique in that scenario of they don't have to worry about that as much because mm -hmm. they're they're always unique. But the the PVE or the more casual player is is looking to constantly get a new experience or unlock something new and exciting. And the only way to do that is to grow in power or uh yeah, I guess grow in power to be able to take on the, that raid that they were never able to do before right yeah. so like i don't know raiding a vandal system shouldn't be something that you could do on day one it should mm -hmm. take uh no matter what ships you start with it should take components or things you know other things that unlock that experience for you that you have to work for in the game because i think both of us would agree that the day one experience in terms of ships is that 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 doesn't exist but the day yeah. one experience in terms of on day one, all content shouldn't be unlocked for players. Uh, some content should take a no, long needs, time. To there experience. needs to be progression in every aspect, right? Like it, yeah. be, like weapons, you know, like armor sets, ship yep. components, reputations, like all like the skill system i'm actually for the skill system to be honest i know a lot of people Same. are fighting that back but like i love love the idea of being occupied with doing something progression and being rewarded for playing the game 
Um, yeah. Ships can't be the end all be all because otherwise <laughs> it's just NFTs. Um, this this actually will pivot great. We can start to wrap things up, but um, you know, we talked about the economy. How about and you know I'm very interested in this. You know I'm very interested in this. How's 30k ink going? How how's things? Oh shit! I, <laughs> I guess with overdrive overdrive we're we've been playing Spons together a little bit up. more. But yeah, I mean, like with the gun running thing, it killed the soul. The my like the whole economy has been yeah. been ruined over with the salvage thing. So we we were we were so excited to get in and play together every Saturday. We were getting in and doing salvaging and trying to make trying to add our own little friction to it to make it more interesting. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, figuring out how to work together. And we were working with like Space Cutlets Org and other orgs and stuff like that. And sure. it was so super, super fun. But then when everything started to be like, all right, well, everybody's got a hundred million, like go to wake, wake of disaster. It's a 40 million credit run. It's Ugh. like, you yeah. know, it and that's like, stupid. Oh, and it, it, and I'll tell you what, like, it's the biggest concern of mine, man, is this economy and the people that are like recklessly making decisions on like insane amounts of pro like, remember Ghost Hollow? Ghost Hollow came out, it was great. How irrelevant is Ghost Hollow now? Like, it, 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 it is barely worth it literally the time prints it takes money and nobody there. goes no one goes yeah it's money growing on trees and no one goes because what happens wake you know spawns and is worth a week of it you know like it's it's insane yep. like that 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 balancing like it does if you if you have a mission to go jump in the middle of narnia you know and it's not contested and people don't know about it though they do know about it through wake right it's a shared mission so it's public but you know like i want yeah, like contested, difficult content to be the reward, not, you know, middle of nowhere to even be anywhere close to as valuable as, you know, some of the profit margins that this game, like, that's the big one. And then there's there's no maintenance cost. There's no upkeep with anything in this game. And um, No, and even with the gun running stuff, it, it, it became such a pain in the ass to the point where, like, I couldn't even really be involved in it as much because only one person could. So like only one person can really <clears throat> hold all the guns because mm -hmm. if 10 of the rail guns are on my account and 10 of the rail guns are on yours, but you live in Australia and I live in America, mm -hmm. how the fuck do we get the 20 together that to give to one person? Yeah. You gotta be okay. online at the same time. You know yep. what I mean? And it became this whole thing. Like, so all I think we were a, a bit ahead of ourselves, similar to probably the way that yeah. I felt you were about like the post you made, right? Yep. But we made it work because we had another org that was willing to like buy into faking it with us. Yep. Right. Which was like Cutlets Org is mm -hmm. we were we were willing to fake it enough to to make it interesting for ourselves. Yep. But then even then, it became so easy that it, it just got boring. I mean, there was during the like first parts of the cargo updates where people like the gold rush at like SML 10 and SMO 18 on microtech mm -hmm. every five minutes, our, our discord was getting pinged, got another hit. And it was just our guys. It was a small group of people, like maybe 10, 12 people maximum, but we were on, like online around the clock, moving boxes for this, for this piracy org. Right. Mm -hmm. And sharing 50, 50, 50, just sharing in the profits. And it it was just infinitely a better experience than I ever had. And then they got to the point where it was like, all right, well, money isn't that useful oh, anymore. This is it. So, yeah. so then they went, all right, pay us in guns. Mm -hmm. So, so we'll we'll buy you give <clears throat> us this many rail guns, and mm -hmm. you keep all of the profit from the hits mm -hmm. until you hit this the threshold of us paying for the guns. Mm -hmm. So then it became even more interesting from that standpoint because then we had to go farm the guns and move the boxes. But oh, then, so good. Then they killed that. So it was like we were so symbiotic and it made sense. I tried to get us to do it a little bit, but it just mm -hmm. never came to fruition. Mm -hmm. And we ha we have such a good system on our Discord as well. Is like each org has their own section of the Discord and their own role. So oh, and then you make our the deals org, within it. Yeah, it has all of yeah, it. Yeah, our yeah, our org can see everything. Mm -hmm. But you, if you 
you like, only partnered interface. with us. Yeah. You would only see your section of the yep. Discord and you would only interface with us. Oh man, through that's that. so good. See, this so is so you won't know who, who I'm dealing with. You won't know that I'm dealing yeah. with Cutlet. Yeah. But and then and then the, like you've ever watched Daisy YouTube videos? This is like cuz like you you talk about Eve and like the articles and stuff sure. and how cool that would be. I look at back at this one Daisy YouTube video. It's so fucking stupid, but it is so good. Mm -hmm. This guy was running a taxi service. So you know how in Daisy you spawn on the coast, but all the action is up in the north? Mm -hmm. This dude ran a taxi service that would pick people up from the coast <laughs> and drive them to the north so they can <laughs> get gear and everything, right? Uh -huh. So you avoid the whole running and all the bullshit. <laughs> Making millions of rubles in the game or whatever. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, and he he partnered with a specific clan yeah. that was like really really powerful, the best PVPers. Yeah. And then another clan came to him and said, "We want you to backstab." Because what they started doing is they were actually cargo hauling like guns and stuff like that for them too. Mm -hmm. So another clan comes to them and is like, "We want you to backstab this guy." And <laughs> they're like, "All right." And the whole thing of like the YouTube video was they agreed to backstab the guy who they'd been working with forever, mm -hmm. but they didn't tell the viewer that in reality, they told the guy that they, that this company came to them and said, we want you to backstab them. So then they reverse backstabbed. You oh, know what really? I mean? So it's like, <laughs> yes, I'll send oh. you the video. It's from this guy called JLK. It's one of the best YouTube videos, gaming YouTube videos I've ever watched in my entire life. Oh, man. And I just, the, the ability to, to do something like that, it would so be hard. so cool. I I tried to do it with uh two two different orgs. Of one was non a non piracy org, and another one was mm -hmm. was to like get the non piracy org to buy guns from us, but to have one of the piracy orgs that I worked with jump the whole thing, and we split the profits. <laughs> you get your and guns back. Just, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it just never like came to uh, fruition or whatever. But like well, that possibility is. Is something so, that could happen. It's so frustrating that we get glimpses of like how good it could be. Oh, exactly. But it's only ever and then glimpses. It, and, then, and then they kill it. Yeah. That's the thing. Is CIG yep. is the one that kills it. Yep. It's not Laranite, us. It's decisions Laranite, that they make. Way too much people are having fun with this Laranite stuff. Like, yeah. you know, let's spread it out. We we got to stop this. Let's stop you know. that. Like what? Like, oh, Jump Town. Let's make thirty-five different drug labs. Yeah. And you can't hold just one. Yeah. You know? And it was just yeah. Like, okay, guys. Yeah. Mama. It's it's exhausting. It, it, it's like they the community finds something by accident and they have so much fun with it and then it gets killed. But yeah, yeah, like I really want what you described to be the norm, like with everything. You know, like with mining, with cargo haulings, food supplies, medical supplies, like not just wet gun running and mining like just a wealth of things you know like a a yeah. whole web of orgs interacting with each other based off dependencies you know and i just worry that you know the npc side of that could kill a lot of that web you know that inner connections between all these orgs and stuff like that like i love that idea of people having unique relationships like you go into an it org could. you you've got good and bad relationships it's like a faction you know but yeah, um, I just hope they use it as a tool to make sure the economies don't stagnate or uh, players can't over inflate prices and things like mm -hmm. that. And and because I've definitely experienced that in MMOs and it's not fun. Um, but the because I every MMO a Zerg takes control and ruins everything. Yep. Yeah. Even These, the games has I the worship, ability that's to the balance issue. that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you worship Last Oasis. Zergs yep. ruined that game. Yeah, they did. Uh, Atlas, Zergs ruined Atlas. All these games had so much potential, but Zergs yep. ruined them. Well, what if a system nine to one NPCs has the ability? Maybe it's not one nine to one NPCs all the time. Mm -hmm. but maybe it is when it needs to be. Right. Yep. yep. Yeah. Maybe it yeah. is when it needs to be. Yep. We just gotta hope. If we're if we're all gonna sit here and hope that this game is gonna be so great, we gotta hope that that they're not as stupid as they've made themselves look because mm. all the focus was on we are creating a tech demo where mm -hmm. we are we are proving that we can make star citizen you gotta look like for me i just look at the context clues of the more recent times the things they say make a hell of a lot more sense than the things they used to say yeah and 
you know we got who some I, people there that that seem to be in doing the right thing these days and you know who i think it is like side piece rich tyra like everything i i feel like that i've seen come He's from saying rich all tyra, the right things yeah i'm like rich tyra might be playing games like he might be actually out there playing video games like whereas sometimes you see the decisions they make it like oh that guy doesn't play games you know it's like or yeah or that idea doesn't sound that great like and you know everything i've seen announced or come from rich tyra i thought has been like really based really on tune like a good decision to be honest yeah but then um, but then the uh the f7a is in god that was the way it is it? i mean you're the the director of the live exp whatever your yeah, position true. is you you are the you are now the person that we look to and go you had to have a hand in this in some way right mm -hmm. so you can you know you could type in my twitch chat i hate pay to win mm -hmm. but when the actions are different did he type um, that in your chat yeah Oh. Yeah, during Citizen Con. Oh. I hate pay to win. Oh. And I was like, damn, okay, well, you know, me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but this is good. We like to hear that. You gotta walk the walk. Yeah, you gotta walk, you gotta the, walk. walk the walk. Yeah. And and who knows if he had a part in that or not. That decision could have been made fucking six years ago. Yeah. It's it's just a matter of of they gotta they can talk all they want, mm -hmm. but the actions that we've seen yeah, have not exactly. yet kind of proven that out yet, right? Yep. Now, the last question I've got for you, because uh, to be honest, I can't be, I know we were going to talk about the upgrade thing, but um, the last question I've got for you was, um, and I've, I asked this to everyone, if you were on the economy team and they hand you the lead of it, where would you point the staff? So like the economy, you're ahead of the economy team, where are you pointing the guys to go work at? Like, what, like what immediately needs the most 323, attention? what's the most important yeah. thing? Yeah. Uh, refueling, rearming, and repairing. Just just make a gold sink. Mm -hmm. Refueling, rearming, repairing, and then every time you land on a station, you pay. Yep. If it's not your home, and it's and and it's not just like some number you don't care about, right? Because that's the thing. Like I hit, I tick the spanner, I tick the engines, I tick the quantum button. Like I do all the repairs, the rearms, yeah. the refuels. I never have even looked at that number. I wouldn't be able to tell you what the that first... average number is. Yeah, the first thing I would do is add gold sinks and not really yep. be concerned about the balance of the economy yet because mm -hmm. the there are no gold sinks, so yep. we need to make them and then you can do the balancing you want after. I think their their goal was to be like, all right, well, there's a lot of things that people are playing, and I'm totally fine with this. There's yep. a lot of things that people are playing now. They're all fucked. We need to go through that list and, and clean yep. them up. Like I have some numbers from, from Evo that... The, okay, the... Almost everything is exactly the same as live, mm -hmm. but RMC and construction materials, the, the most egregious ones, mm -hmm. uh, RMC went from 13,000 to 10,000 per SEU, which is not a big jump, but it's also a very time consuming and kind of a pain in the ass to extract. Mm -hmm. uh, then the construction materials, which was the most problematic, went from 6K to 3K per SEU. So it got cut in half, but... 10 million an hour cut in half is still yeah too much Five. so yeah so I, yeah I, which is good is in so you we don't know so you're saying any final that numbers salvaging anything, salvaging got nerfed a bit and that might bring some more competition with like mining and hauling right like that's yeah, but it's where... all broken still yeah. like it, it, yeah the, so much. I, I feel like we need to go back to the old days of like it it was a big deal until oh. you made a hundred thousand an hour, right? Like yeah, that was like dude. the best way, you know. And and then they're talking about they did raise the prices of all the ships in the in the PTU, as far as I'm aware. Yeah. Um, it's super broken buying and and stuff. There's like yeah, so many why not, things, but uh, why not nerf the why earning? not lower? Yeah, yeah, like l l nerf the earning of it. You know, like that's the that's the root cause the, for the issue. Uh, to for be me fair, as well. a lot of ship prices needed to change, and I think you'd be behind this too. Is like things like the Gladius, things like the Saber, like military grade ships being way more expensive, mm -hmm. but hopefully coming with better components, right? Yep. Uh, being a thing to go mm -hmm. along with that. So it's not just the monetary economy change. It also needs to be the flight team and, and what yeah. they decide is a default loadout to these vehicles yeah. or whatever. But yep. the uh, it's hard to say what they've done yet. And mm -hmm. I, I'm curious if if 
there's a lot more going on that they have not implemented into the current 323 and you know holding off on a con because those are numbers that they don't need to show up until live which would be mm -hmm. so cool mm -hmm. if like they ship it to live and then all of a sudden you go and every price has changed and yeah. everything is different because who cares mm -hmm. right it's still live like they say is still a testing environment but they don't need to test the balance the of the economy, economy. Mm -hmm. exactly and and then and then through that they get a lot more valuable data because mm -hmm. you make the change in the game now don't wipe and everything is kind of the way it is then you're not going to learn get make any learning about the changes that you made mm -hmm. if you don't change everything or you don't surprise us or you know plenty of people have time to make videos of what the most meta thing is or whatever so you would you would focus on the base pillars of upkeep in, which which is for the ships maintaining your ships i would too i mean the way like, you it's the, the way you ask the question would. yeah yes like the, yeah. the very first thing i would do is be like yeah. that's the most obvious one right because it, it yeah, is no it's just a here. number none of us care like it's just it's more of a and hassle a to click, open that... up the moby glass land and click the buttons than it is a yeah kind of... it's also it's also a number that is not so do you notice that i didn't say the insurance timers yeah those are yeah. affected by way too often by bugs server crashes yeah, and other sure. things yep. i ignored that one in that statement i affected ones that are only happening when you're having a good experience yeah right is i survived the fight i need to repair now yeah i um i ran out of fuel because i've been playing so much and haven't had a 30k you know mm -hmm. so like mm -hmm. these are you know i'm landing at this hangar there should be a hangar fee or, or yep. whatever right so those those are the ones that that i think are way more important now yeah. But I do think the most important piece of the economy in the short term is dealing with insurance and claim timers. Yeah. Because that is the, the, th the most abused feature currently, and that creates the lack of risk and reward for every side of the equation, not just casual players but pvpers don't share that same you want your heart to pound too if you have a chance yeah to i don't die, want to right? lose i want to, i want lose to suck i want losing yeah. to suck yep yep yeah like absolutely you're so right with that like it the claiming of your ships like what three thousand right now you know it's nothing and it's like and, five and the biggest minutes. pain is is waiting yep yep what the fuck is that yep i like the idea it's like okay that ship's now out of reach for the next couple of days but again 30ks you know random invisible asteroids yeah, we you know, can't those have that yet solved. yeah exactly yeah. exactly but like a necessity to have like three sabers because two are on an insurance claim for that week and stuff like that like just reason yep. for depth um yeah a hundred percent but no i liked i liked the answer to that i'd also say remember the i remember you and me were tied this we'll wrap it up with this remember how disappointing the price commodity alerts ended up being remember we were like oh man this is it this is gonna be yep. great like this has so much potential didn't it like that never used it it, it could have been the best thing that an economy has ever looked like in star citizen oh this one's spiking let's head all over there that's the new scenery for the next week you know and instead just zilch just nothing nothing to it and it Ugh. was it, it, it's not even the next week it's every hour yeah yeah and it, it barely budges in any direction worth even looking at it's just an annoying notification and it and, it, and it's yep. got the potential to be the biggest economy incentive they've made in the game yet Oh, I, 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 I was so if, excited about if that. If I had I one that, question to ask Tony Z, I think I would use it on that. <laughs> yeah, they'd just well, be like, why didn't? Because I know th that was, I believe that was a part of Quanta and these things that they were like integrating in. And that was my time. concern with it, right? It was like, like what? Like because it, it barely did anything. I was like, if this is any Quanta in action, it ain't doing nothing. You know, like if Dude, it is I re actually remember... self-adjusting based off the economy right now, it ain't adjusting I mean, it to is. anything interesting. Well, that's my problem with Quanta, right? It I want to loop but back around. Swings, but... It swings so little because they yeah, didn't that... want it to swing in, in huge directions for yeah. some reason. 
And that's that's the issue for me. It's like I want the economy yep. to fluctuate a bit more, you know, not too much, not to the point where it's gate kept at all or anything like that, or it becomes stagnant, but for it to really fluctuate and create interesting narratives that unfold, like, you know, everyone's at, you know, Walla this week because of this, you know, and then that now moves over the Grim Hex mining and the asteroid belt because there's a necessity. Yeah, and it over doesn't there. have to be it doesn't have to be the Tony Z dynamic economy right away. It can yeah. just be kind of random and, or, or you can like watch it grow over time. Like one day I do want it to be a situation where like Crusader L1 is a very popular mining uh, outpost, let's say a refinery. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. But, but what if, what if not enough s- starfarers who are extracting fuel from somewhere mm-hmm. are, what if they're not delivering enough quantum fuel to that location then Mm -hmm. the price of repair refuel rearm goes way up or maybe you just won't be able to refuel there for a period of time right (laughs) yeah and like then all of a sudden the commodity price alert goes off quantum fuel to crusader all one oh man you know what i mean gosh and then couldn't it be it could be so special yeah, the pirates are going to all the hotspots where yeah. the starfires scoop, f- scoop fuel, and then they're also, you know, right outside of Crusader L1 <laughs> with all the fucking interdiction bubbles trying to then catch people. There's a necessity for security and the lawful, like, it's just everyone gets pulled yeah. along, you know? It's so... One I love the idea change. of that. Yep. One. Ugh. One small change. It's not small in a coding example, most likely, but mm-hmm. from a... You you were almost there is what yeah. it felt like. Yeah, to you us. were so you close were so to close. the finishing line. Yeah, and it was so long ago. And, then, and it's I'd be curious if it even gets looked at, you know, like at all. Like if it's it just got planted in and then forgotten about. Yeah, it's sad. Certainly not now. Yeah, but no, I love dude. This was juicy. Yeah, I really I had a lot yeah, of fun with this, fun. Mike. This was good. I really I like talking, talking economy about, with you too. Like yeah, I love talking why. about just what what I what makes me fall in love with games yep. and there's no reason why i can't i fell in love with what star citizen could be mm-hmm. i have fallen out of love with what it's become mm-hmm. but there's no reason i can't fall in love again yep yeah for sure you know it's like it's so funny the biggest thing that caught me off guard off guard and i don't know if they ever announced this mike um and it was like something that really gave me a copium with the game i don't think i'd still be playing without it was when our bodies started stopped started dropping loot i was like yeah wait you telling me that i can loot an entire play like everything they have like everything like that was Whole for loot. me was like holy shit these guys are yeah. chads dude like that yeah is- i was like this game is going in a direction that i didn't even think it was going in and i Yo. love it Yo. and then that's when i started okay that was like the first time that i think people started being like whoa yeah hey, you're you're not mad at anymore i don't understand and i'm like yeah. well yeah why would it be mad if they did something awesome yeah right yeah and and then i was like the only thing they need to do next is make the armor that are on characters meaningful yeah and they never really did that but they they got close with the uh with the guns mm-hmm. yeah and and that's the big one right like they they definitely need to look at that because you can't have every gun available at every store like it or you know i a tiny quantum jump away yeah you know mm. but oh man the potential mike the potential it's so close brother i had a ton of fun with this yeah so good yeah it was awesome all righty hey that's it we'll wrap it up there people can catch you on salty mike on twitch you're reacting jazz i don't really have to advertise i got like 10 guys that watch this but hey i had a lot of fun i appreciate you thanks for coming yeah <laughs> yeah man Alrighty. I, anytime i will do this anytime i mean guys we do this we've been on, on a few pods all the time yeah we, we've been on a few pods i've been i always use i used to love going to adc but you're a little late for me nowadays but yeah, um yeah. used to always do adcs with you but yeah this this it's funny because i say this with burks when i did him too i was like this is just us on discord <laughs> like we used to we would you and me would do this at least two three times a week you know for Easily. a lot of time so no. Yeah. Well, here's the hoping 323 is the first step to it getting better in this economy team's uh, implementation. Hopefully, they're on the right path and start really tuning up some stuff, yeah? Yeah, or maybe they don't do anything. 
this time, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, they seem to be very active. Every month the report is is a thing. Mm -hmm. Like tomorrow, I don't know when you post this, but tomorrow we're, is Wednesday, and, and mm -hmm. the month report comes out. And I keep hearing from developers, you got to see this month report. You got to see this month oh, report. Really? I don't know what okay. it's about. So, yeah, that Ooh. usually that means it's something that you and I would be interested in. So Hell we'll yeah. have to see. Okay. Well, yeah, they're not, they're not saying that. what it is, but they're just like, you're going to want to see this. Like, Shit. Okay. There we go. Because you and me, we yeah. want very much the same thing, I think. Like, it's, yeah. a, a, and if we ever, you know, confuse ourselves, we've got confused in the details of it. So, yeah, dude. Yeah. Hell yeah. Looking forward to it. Alrighty, brother. I'll catch you and uh, we'll get into some master modes training here soon. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Needs to. Needs to. Yeah. I can't be can't be getting knocked out in round one of whatever this is they're gonna put me and you up against each other um, um me is you know inspiring it is what creator. it is then <laughs> it, yeah. it'll be what it'll be then but hopefully i can survive at least one round as long as burks doesn't make it okay we gotta knock him out early. <laughs> <laughs> true true all right dude ggs yeah i'm gonna hit the Secret stop record pact. button uh appreciate yeah, you again Alrighty, of course